So that's not gonna. Yeah, that's the point. Like, if, if, if I'm using this this uh, object dot uh, keys for the first, I'm just looking through the first value and rest. I'm not going deeper than that. This this array is just good. we just want because at some time. point that last value of of rest, the final one where it stops, provides a, a value of null. So yeah. you can at least find out when that ends, like as you're going down. Like that's okay. my only. Okay. Um, but to like pull back because you're basically tr just trying to get you're just trying to return the number. Like so, are we going to like uh, uh, tie a, a loop inside a loop to just go through each each list each list, uh, each, each list on the way? So I, I was thinking of using three three loops within each other. You go through each. A triple. I mean, <laughs> you could, but like the the big that's, that's, aspect of that is 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 a lot right like you like the idea is you want to to your i mean it's it's an algorithm it's a more of a computer science thing but like the idea is to to limit the times you're looping through because the the you know it's fine when it's like five things but when it's five thousand things then <laughs> the plus then the algorithm and, is big and the memory like yeah oh, yes. I'm, I'm just trying to model like solution to this algorithm. yeah yeah and if i can get that then i can Try to right. Like, then you can iterate. Yeah, and like, I can always yeah, like, I can always work on it later. We fact to right. like work for any kind of list. So let I me just get, let me just get this first. Then I can just always get the answer. Get one answer at least right now. <laughs> I don't want to like I don't want to leave it and go ahead because I might not come back. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. So that's the point. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. If you can't find solution, you just try to look through the second question. Read the first two lines, and I'll go to the next page for you to read read through the remaining of the second of this of the last question. Deep comparison. I did something on it, but I'm not sure of the of the uh, of the so, of the solution I came up with. So, um, so should I move to the next page? Wait to read. Oh no, I can I can pull it. I think I have a copy of the eloquent somewhere in my. In my oh, okay, folder. okay. So I can pull it up. Okay, just, so, just so you you can focus on your thing. I don't want to, I don't want to <laughs> take not, that away from you. I'm not working. Right? I'm just trying to find a solution to it. Then I can always. So if, if you find a solution, I can always study your code and try to walk through it and understand it. So next time I can always use it on something else. Right. That's what I tend to. Yeah. Because <laughs> on my own, I don't I think I'm going to Google. Yeah. This. Google it and <laughs> take that answer and worry about. <laughs> All right, let me pull up. Where's my, where, there's my books. I've got like 7,000 of them. I don't think I've read like two. I should really get better about this. Uh, Oh, there it is. Cool. Okay. Yeah, Pat, did you have any ideas of what you want to do? What do you want to go over? Oh, I mean, we can go over ES6 or. I'm sorry, I was asking. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I just, just wasn't sure what we were going to go over I, today. I, on mute. I was over here talking and nobody heard me. <laughs> like, yeah. No, I was like, um, so yeah, dude, like for me, and the, like I was for the audience, like what are you guys working on right now? Like for me too, like what are you guys working on right now? Okay. So can we just move, move over to like um, free code So um um John, how far have you gone on JavaScript? Like um have um, you done anything about like since yeah, last time you uh, I just about finished the basics. Is it making more more sense now that you're going back through it? Uh, I haven't been going back through it. I've actually uh, started uh, this freelance project. Okay. Yeah, I've been crashing on this dude. What are you doing? Freelance? Is it yeah, it's fully responsive. It's actually, it's like the same template as uh, the W3 develops, 
but like uh, I'm about to make the, uh, the image at top. I'm about to make it like an automatic, and then everything else is pushing up too. So it's gonna be like a like a music website. Here, I'll show you. you guys want to see my screen? I'll show you guys. Yeah, good. Let me see. You know, it's not much right now, but you know, obviously the HTML can be switched up super quick. I'm not worried about that. It's more about just getting all the layout and everything more done. I want it, and then you know, he wanted it, like he wanted me to make like a friggin' a calendar where I can click on it. But dude, I you know they have like whole apps that they're selling for that. So that's like a whole project in of itself. So I was like, dude, how about we use a Google form, <laughs> and that'll be super quick, and uh, it'd probably be quick. Yeah, it'd probably be better. You know, so where is it? At? I don't know. Oh, stuff open. Right here. And where's his website that I'm working on? Man? So this is the website I'm building. Yeah, like I'm gonna make all this like, like the, uh, like things that you can click on. Like I'm gonna show you at the website. I gotta find it. Yeah, do you guys like a Wix site? And I guess it's like really freaking slow. And like it just totally drives away traffic because it's not even responsive. So you see how it's taking the load. This is what it has to get away from it. And I'm just gonna hold it, host it on GitHub pages and do everything through third party. Like all the payments, do that through like Stripe or PayPal. Yeah. That way nobody has to pay nothing. And if I, I really want to put it on Amazon, dude. There's a, there's a musician here that said put it on Amazon. They don't even know what PayPal is. They was like, put it on Amazon. I was like, what? Really? You don't know what PayPal is? He's like, yeah, <laughs> eBay. Right? I was like, yeah, Amazon or eBay. So uh, so so I was like, Amazon, dude. Like, she's like, yeah. Like, she like, because she's the one that said Amazon. So I was like, Look how low, low this is, dude. Um, yeah, it's basically, watch the rest of this isn't even loaded yet. Or it might be, but it's not fully loaded. Um, doesn't even fully load. Uh, there's supposed to be like other stuff right here. Like you can see I can hide it over something. I don't want to click on it, it'll take forever. Um, but yeah, I'm basically cloning this and like all these pages in the nav. And then like, like I'm kind of putting my own spice on it. I'm gonna change up all the gold to green. I'm not seeing anything. Are you sharing your screen, John? Oh, you don't see my screen, dude? No. <laughs> I see you. <laughs> don't let me say anything. <laughs> Why are you saying, oh my gosh. I, was gonna... <laughs> I thought you were just giving us like a preemptive. Uh... No. <laughs> <laughs> what would be the point of that? <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> oh, man, that's funny. Um, let's uh. Uh, yeah, so basically it's, you know, this is his site that I'm like cloning and stuff and I'm just putting my own spice on it because it's like, it was, if you guys didn't see it, but it was super slow to load and I don't want to click on anything else and it's not responsive. I don't want to click on anything because it'll take like 30 to 45 seconds to load. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's this not is on Wix? Yeah, it's on Wix. Uh, um, where, so where's the site that I was building? Somewhere over...
Right so it's like basically like the same template as the one that I use for W3 developers. But like I'm gonna make that I'm gonna make that automated Every, and everything that's gold is gonna be green. Like this right here, this is going to be like, I'm going to make those into this part right here, like this. That's, I'm going to make those do what that does. Or, you know, because it's a quick view, but my quick view is actually a quick view. Mm -hmm. um, and then this, you're probably going to have like a whole row of stuff like this, because there's other stuff here besides it, obviously. But, and again, I got to make this automated so it scrolls past like pictures. Oh, what, I have like a slider up top? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so then I gotta make a shop with all the stuff, book, book, bookings for the studio, jobs, services, about contact. That's it. I'm gonna switch this up and I'm gonna make this part right here. And uh, that part is gonna be this part right here. These little bitty links. I'm gonna actually give links to. I'm gonna plug in. Yeah, that's dude. Where are you gonna host it at? Uh, probably GitHub. You gonna host it on GitHub? I could put it on my own hosting, but you know, it just depends on what he wants. You know, if he wants it on GitHub, I don't see why not, right? It's all not right. like personal data is really gonna be going through. It's all gonna be third party. Google Forms. Yeah, I was just wondering if you know he wanted a custom domain or something. He has a custom it. domain. No, no, he, yeah, he has a custom domain uh, on GoDaddy, musicloungestudios.com. So what, are you just going to redirect it to the GitHub? Probably. I don't see why not. No, I was just wondering. There's some really nice integrations that you can do with it, too. Like, like if anything, I, I, I would probably do some work with them for fun, just because it'll be open source. So I'll probably, like... Uh, Dude, like I'd probably try out, like I'll probably fork it and try out some, try Jekyll with this stuff, you know, because his 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 is really the newer version of our site. Our site is actually still on Bootstrap three point seven. His is on Bootstrap four. Yeah, there's really not much difference between it besides syntax. Mm. Well, you hear about Bootstrap five, right? That they're mm -hmm. they're taking out jQuery altogether and just gonna use oh. uh, vanilla JavaScript. <laughs> He says, Which will make, they'll make the library a lot smaller. <laughs> yeah, someone's going to pop up. You heard about Bootstrap 10? <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like every, yeah, I know. That's the way it works. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, what are we doing today? Pretty cool camp or what? Oh, Mozilla. I don't know, John. What do you, what do you think you need help on? Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, Today's John's day. I think you guys should work on a project together using GitHub. I think you guys should all agree on a project to work on that will last about a day. Okay. How about the JavaScript 10 projects? Okay, can we, let's, work, let's work on that now. I've been trying to work, not just our time, but I'm, just, I'm, I'm just studying the Lord, so 
Where we let them from? The JavaScript 10. What's that? I mean, JavaScript 30? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, Java, the West Boss course. Yeah, I mean, I, the, the one thing I didn't like about that course is it's just watching code, you know? Oh, that one? I, yeah. I started, so like for that drum kit, I wanted to have the functionality to both press the button and like click on it. So mm -hmm. I kind of, you know, finagled a way to do it. So uh, obviously you can like customize it beyond what he writes, but you're right. Like it's basically 20 minutes of watching him code. Mm -hmm. Like I prefer like, you know, here's a project, build it. Instead of right. you know, here, watch how I build Right. This project here's all the resources and, and that's the thing like i want a project like right now what do i i want a project let me go i, I wonder if i can call let me call wolfie or somebody i think wolfie's online dude let me call wolfie let me call dj let me call wolfie or dj let me call water legend <laughs> call somebody real quick Doug. I know one. Of the, I know you guys know it too. A project that would take it too. But I just want to get somebody. I want to. I want to get somebody that's actually in the industry right now. I want to get one of them. I want to be. Able, I want to see if I can call one. Be right quick. Let me see. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Elliot. Hey, Elliot. Yeah, what's up, dude? What's your yeah. Attention? Sorry, I've been out of pocket, guys. Sorry. Hey, Abbott. Oh, yeah. It's been a crazy week. My uh, my mother-in-law had to fly to India. Her uh, her mother is about to die, so hmm. okay, I had to sorry. like sorry, sorry. Oh, you be more like. Oh, it, there for the family and stuff because usually my mother-in-law helps me with, helps us with watching the kids so it's just been a tougher week understandable they even doing much coding this week uh a little bit i haven't finished the basic javascript part yet though mm -hmm. it's okay we but, haven't started anything besides that past there yet you haven't gone past no, and we also have not uh, gone too far. I think we, we haven't gone too far at all into uh, the. Like we're waiting on, like uh, waiting on, to catch up a little bit so we can just um, end up going to ES six together. We don't want, want anybody to be behind. Yeah, yeah we we don't. Don't. everybody should move together. That's that would be better. Yeah, I just want to make sure everybody's caught up on on JavaScript. You know. Yeah, well, because the deeper you go, I'm a little too far behind, so don't feel like you gotta wait up on me. Mic real quick, it's gonna get loud. No, it's all right to wait. We can just um 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 Adam, Adam, what what's up? We can try just try to complete the um golden scripts while waiting on um John and um. Yeah, yeah I'll I'll probably be able to finish it tonight. I've only okay. got like. I'm like ha at least over halfway through. Yeah, you're good. You'll, you'll, so. you'll be able to, yeah, yeah. Let's just work on questions. Let's work on the, the remaining question from the um, algorithm scripting. Um, oh, the algorithm, the basic yeah, algorithms? Yeah, yeah, let's just think round we're only like 10 in and there's realistically like 15 or 16. So let's just round it up tonight while we're in the book of them. What do you think? Yeah, that's fine. I'll, I mean, I'll go ahead and start because I haven't even started that section yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's not too crazy. And like I said, we took our time with a lot of those solutions. <laughs> we tried to like answer it a bunch of ways. Yeah. More, more cert, you know, for all of us to understand uh, that there's no one right way to answer. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, creating like functions is all we were really doing. So like, yeah. Um, it's, even, it's even helpful to like I I'll found to like download them. Download the. Uh, I tend to download the complicated ones, the ones I think are a bit tough. Yeah, to download work. them, work with them a little bit, and then even like do a git commit for your own, um, right? Your own repo and stuff like that. 
Um, you know, because if you're spending that amount of time to try to figure it out, then it's worth it to just download it and, you know, keep that one tucked away in your repo. I think, I think we are, we are on, um, like, I think we're on Google or so. I think I, yeah. I, I slept off on Google. Uh, I, I'm sure of that one. <laughs> That's where he dozed off. <laughs> <laughs> I slept off. So I don't know if you guys went ahead. I don't know. All right. Um, um, I think we only did like one or more after that. Yeah. You, you, let's start going through them and. Yeah, I'll start at the start here. Um, basic al algorithm scripting converts Celsius to Fahrenheit. The algorithm converts Celsius to Fahrenheit is the temperature in Celsius times 9 over 5 plus 32. You're given a variable. Celsius representing a temperature in Celsius. Use the variable Fahrenheit um, already defined and assign it the Fahrenheit temperature equivalent to the given Celsius temperature. Use the algorithm mentioned above to help convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. Don't worry too much about the function and return statements as they will be covered in future challenges. For now, only use operators you have learned. Well, this is pretty simple. So all you're gonna do is take the Celsius and uh, plug it into an algebraic formula. So I'm gonna set Fahrenheit to, um, Put in parentheses Celsius times, and then put another parentheses. Uh, Five. Yeah, let's give thing. Oh. Yeah, we were we did the, <laughs> we were very confused because we we ended up like I I wanted to see if it actually did like the way it did with without parentheses, and apparently it still so runs, but like you, that's you, still you that point, you know, like, Pandas applies to it. Um, um, use use the print, normal mathematical precedence like work with it so yeah I mean it would still do the multiplication okay, so you would get down, Celsius uh, times nine divided by five plus thirty two which is pretty much the same right that's, that's more of my lack of math understanding like how <laughs> well parentheses apply to to PEMDAS and all that <laughs> so this should yeah, pass yeah. <laughs> yeah let's go to the next one oops Maybe later. All right, reverse a string, reverse the provided string. You may need to turn the string into an array before you can reverse it. Your result must be a string. Remember to use read, at, read search ask if you get stuck, write your own code. Okay, so I know this one because I actually did this, this one on Edibit uh, like two days ago, so. Um, you can actually, let's see. Let's see, let's let new string equal str dot split, which will split the string into an array um, with nothing in between. And then um, I think you do new String dot reverse, I think, and then um, I could probably just come here and do new string dot join with that. Oops. No, I think you have to assign, you can assign, try to assign um, um, new string dot reverse to string. So you can always still return string, then string dot join. No, but if, uh, well, I guess you could, yeah. Yeah, so this should still work. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, because here, when I console log new string, you see it as the reversed array. Yeah, it should work. And then, and then the, as long as you join it before you, yeah. Yeah, the join, it'll return the join. Try, okay, try to um, do everything on the line. The way, uh, oh, try yeah, to work, line. Everything, work it on, try to do everything on um, just the return string. Re one line? So, yeah, like, return yeah. str. Yes. That split. Good. Good. Dot reverse. Dot join. And then dot join 
Yeah, that should work also. Yeah. With a lot fewer lines of code. Yeah. But I, I find myself needing to type stuff out. Yeah. <laughs> to make sure yeah, I'm understanding make, the way it works. So you can do that. <laughs> yeah, you can do that first, then you refactor to make it smaller. Just to right. Yeah. The right. way you're solving the problem, just don't bother about the size of the program. The way you're done solving the problem, you can now shrink it, remove some of the things, and actually try to mold it into a more complex and functional way. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So let's go to the next one. Um, factorialize a number. Return the factorial of the provided integer. If the integer is represented with the letter N, a factorial is a product of all positive integers less than or equal to N. So factorials are often represented with a shorthand notation in exclamation point. For example, five exclamation point equals one times two times three times four times five, which equals 120. Only integers greater than or equal to zero will be supplied in the function. Uh, write your own code. So I think. Okay, uh, I, I would want you to use a loop to, to do this and use, can you, uh, you, you, you can, can you work with the question? Yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loop through and count yeah. up every number to, yeah. to num it's and like, equal to num like, yeah, and then like, uh it's gonna be times equals yeah you can do that then after you've done that and go through then try to use recursion recursion to work on it also uh equals one uh, is less than or equal to num i plus plus um now i should set a variable first That's a variable product or something. You utilize it to zero. Yeah. No, because if it's zero, then everything will be times zero, which will be zero. <laughs> oh, it's like to one, sorry. <laughs> oh, it's like to one, yeah. Um, so, so x times equals yeah. i. Okay. And then. Once we load the uh, call to the function. Console log the call to the function. Console log it? The call, call to the function, at, at line nine. Line nine. Mm -hmm. Console log, so you can see the result before trying to run it. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. So that gives you uh, 16. Oh, it's just because I put a plus here. Oh. Okay, the hand right. So I uh, think that then so try to work with you work on it with caution and see if you can find your way around it. Um what do you mean? Oh, hold on, hold on. Passing zero. Passing set zero for set of five and see if your program works. Well it's gonna be zero. That's no, gonna be one because it's gonna be one. Yeah, yeah it does like it should be one. So try to use recursion to work with it. Did the run, did it, did it? So explain to me what exactly recursion is, because you're further ahead in JavaScript than I am. So what does recursion mean? Um, I said recursion is just you calling a function in itself. Like if, when, you, when you like, um, you create the function, yeah? Then within the function, you still call that function. You, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Hello? Yeah, I'm, I'm listening. I'm, I'm listening. So you, you, you call the function within itself to perform the syntax on and on and on to like a particular condition is met. So within the function, you call the function? Yeah. So like you can just um, try to create enough or uh, clear the solution or comment out the solution you did inside within the function. Within so the function, what what is the purpose of calling the function? You can you can, you can use recursion to you, you could recursion perform like sometimes that arrays can you can use recursion instead of an app instead of um instead of a, a loop. Sorry, so for some solutions you can use recursion instead of a loop. 
So can one of you like share your screens and then show yeah. me exactly what you're talking about? Because I have no clue. Okay, let um, me share my screen. Liquid, let me just. Um, Okay. We are going to use our recursion for this. Uh, is this um? So we'll be returning the call to the function again. Okay. So just for the old thing to go through, we can just try to make some this thing if um Num equals equals zero. Um, now that I realize it probably could be one, like num equal triple equals one, and then yeah. it returns one, and then everything else should so, return back. Yeah, so it won't um, go through. It won't go through the whole thing. Return one. So, um, the second return statement is not within the um, um, if statement. So if you, why did this way? If you um, if you are, if you create an if statement and you just pass in, if there's only one or uh, one line of code. You don't need the curly braces. So I think this should work. And you can see the this thing goes to let me just make the code um, more readable for just to make it readable. Hello. So I don't understand exactly what's happening. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, do you mind if uh okay, let's um, do oh. uh, madam go on? Okay, I think you should be able to explain it better than I am. Hmm? Okay. Here, let me let me pop it on here. Uh, so you to give me a uh, oh, here's here. Let me one second. Okay, so I can do it this way. So let's imagine. Uh, that for so you see that that if uh, if num equals one it returns one mm -hmm. and then it returns num times factorial times some what so let's visualize that right so let's say it's uh, so where in num is let's say it's five so five times factorial five minus one which is four so it creates a function right like this and so now it needs to know what factorial the uh, answer to factorial four is, right? So it mm -hmm. creates a function, and it returns num times factorial times three. So it creates another function. It's waiting, and then it does again three three times factorial two, right? Mm -hmm. And now we're we're down to three two times factorial of one. Now num equals one, so uh, one is go it's going to return one. So mm -hmm. that's the answer. So then it's going to go back up here. And it's going to say, all right, well, uh, two times one is uh, a two. All right, cool. So now it knows two to that, that answer from the previous one is two. So three times two is six. Cool. All right, function's done. So it basically creates these stacks, right? All right, I guess it'd be this way. It creates these stacks. So it's basically, it works its way up. So now it's at three or six, six times, I forgot, four, it's 24. 
and then finally hits uh, 24 times 5, which is 120. And it hits. So, so basically, it's using it's it's every time it it needs to know every time it's returning itself. It's basically creating this this execution context for this function, and mm -hmm. just keeps going, like nesting itself on top of each other, until it gets its answer, and then starts going popping everything off the stack until it gets back to the original function, and gets its answer. Okay. So, that's so when it returns itself, where does it go? It, it goes it to the creates, beginning. Yeah. So, so when it you mean when it returns the function, or do it returns like the final answer, which is one? Right. So if you type in factorialize five, okay, it's going to return five times factorialize, factorialize four. Gonna, four. Four. So it's going to create a new function and put it on top of the stack. Mm -hmm. So let's like, let's pretend this is the execution stack, right? right? So it's literally just creating these stacks, and so the original ones down here and it gets to the top and finally gets an answer, then it's got to start actually answering all these questions. So they're all on hold basically right. every time. And so once it finally starts answering, it'll start going through mm -hmm. until finally we're back at the answer, which in that case is 120 and it's done. Okay, so what is the, the benefit of that like code wise? Like what is that mainly used for besides basic calculation? Uh, it, it's, it depends, right? So it's fine to do this when it's five, right? Mm -hmm. But imagine when it's 5,000, now you have 500 execution, your 500 functions that are waiting for an answer. Mm -hmm. So your browser might not, like the node engine might not prefer that, like if it's 5,000, right? Like it's gonna, it's gonna freak out. So most of the time when they do that, they use an iterative process. So there's an inner function called like, and they use a counter that basically collects that answer and allows it to like, as opposed to stacking it like that, it, it just basically returns the function. It just does it once. Where it just, mm -hmm. and it's, every time it's running through, it'll go, all right, it has a counter, it moves the answer to the counter, puts that off, runs it again, and just keeps going off. So in theory, that would be better because that's an iterative process, right? Like, so recursion can be tough uh, because it, it, uh, again, like if you, it's fine with five, but 5,000, it would kill your computer or kill whatever memory or kill <laughs> Whatever program like like using recursion is like the execution time for recursion is slower compared to using the loop. It is. It is very slow. It yeah. but but it might well, work it out. Depends. Yeah, it depends on the solution because it, it fits better for just but if you do, the, the more you understand recursion, the more you know when to use it. Um, I don't really understand it that deep, so I don't really know. I don't have to use it, but when to use it, I haven't really like understand understood it to that point. So I'm still trying to work on that and all of that, yeah. Yeah, that's why most of these, most of the solutions you'll see in JavaScript are all iterative. They're all loops, right? Mm. They're not really using recursion. Like recursion works for like programming issues. And, and if it's controlled, like um, it's not exactly something that you would, if, if like for factorialize, like again, if you're using like a large amount of data, you probably want to loop through stuff before you would start doing like recursion because that could get messy. Because it's like a, it's like a super, it's a cool super, but like it's a cool move, but it, it it's, you, you can do the same thing with for loop, so it's not like it's not like it adds any benefit. It's right. just something that, like I know, with other programming languages, are used is used more. Uh, so like, I guess it's just used more, so that then people started since they came from a po programming background over to JavaScript, they just were like, well, I guess I'll use recursion on this. Like recursion, like using recursion, it just makes your code shorter instead of using a loop. Or yeah, it's that's also. I was like, recursion is more of like functional programming, right? Right, right. Because you're basically rather than going through abstract, with a loop, abstract, yeah. you abstract everything within some. So the complexity is high, and the, 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 the size of the code is shorter. Right, Adam. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it, in theory, it's like mm -hmm. recursion is more functional in the sense that like you're getting a pure like they prefer pure functions. They don't want to use console log. They don't want it to do anything other than output something. Right. So, like, they would prefer you to just use uh, more functions, like, and that's more, I guess, computer science and people and people that would prefer, uh, I guess, like TypeScript or things like that. Where it's yeah. just, it's I've never like taken everything. a computer science course in my life, so I, I haven't either. So, like, <laughs> I literally, like, it's only been, I, I, like, yeah. I, I, I tell you, I tell you, I have a degree in computer science. It's just, it's really been like getting frustrated that like someone explains to me recursion is just a function calling itself. Mm -hmm. And me getting mad that that's not a good enough solution. Like, <laughs> that's great. That's cool. Like, if I had a if I had a, a test, like, I'd answer it. But I still understand 
what recursion actually means. Yeah, so, like, that's what I was. That's what I was wondering. I was like, recursion. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Like, literally, if you ask anybody, the simplest term would be like a function calling. Function itself. calling is so simple. That's like the simple term, but which is like the stupidest, like the most frustrating <laughs> answer. Confuse you when you try to use it. The yeah. first time I tried using recursion, I was so I, I just got pissed off. I, I think I, I first used recursion in Python. I didn't even understand it till now. I've not gone back to it in Python. I've not gone back to it in Python. So I, 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 just, I just understood it better in JavaScript. So I, when I go back to Python, I should be able to understand it. I should be able to like, use it better. Right. Again. But since then, I've not used it in Python. So like, it's, it's just a thing that I'm sure you might, like if you ever in an in a, in a interview, and they may ask you to answer some person, and it's more just to prove like you, like you've you've practiced like a full like both. Because I'm sure they'll ask, you know, obviously loops, and maybe get a little more, um, uh, get it more effective. Also like um, when you like function. instead of using loops, you know, what, what else can you use to like loop right. loops and all of that? So it's like one of those things. It's like a, it's like a Jeopardy answer, or like one of those things for like in case you're ever on Jeopardy, like you may yeah. never. You, you may never use in your life, but the times that you will need it, it's going to be maybe necessary for like a job or, yeah, it's not like it's, it's super required. Okay. 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 Um, Adam, apart from for each, um, recursion, um, um, why for and why loop, what else, uh, can you solve and map what, like, what else can you use to look through like a uh, data structure? Apart from those five, oh, uh, well, there's, there's like, I, I always tend to go to reduce. Um, and reduce is more of like you trying to add some, and uh, you look through. Right. Well, so, well like, apart from like, like apart from yeah. functions like um, map, map, filter, reduce. Oh, and you mean like, ones, yeah, yeah. What else can you use to loop two stuff? Other than like four loops and like four. Four loops, one loop, loop uh, for each um, recursion. One. And re what else can you use to loop two stuff? Spread, spread operators. Oh, can you use spread operators to loop through stuff? I guess uh -huh. you can. Yeah, because I got like, uh, array. If you use it as a function parameter, I know that. Oh, yeah, because it literally goes through each one. It it mm -hmm. separates it into. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I haven't used it as much as I probably should. Right, I like well, I noticed that when I was doing the edit challenges, like that was like the easiest way to loop through a. You know, if you have a parameter that accepts a array, that was like the easiest way to do it. Right. Yeah. Cause somebody, somebody provided an answer yesterday where it was like that. Like it was just literally just finding like having a bunch of two dimensional arrays. So an array within an array and we were trying to find the largest number and he literally just used like the math.max and just put in the spread operator for each inner like sub array. Yeah. And, like, it was so much easier <laughs> than trying to run like a for loop and then running another, like, cause we were doing double nested for loops cause that's just, yeah, well, yeah that was always <laughs> and he was like, literally just, no, no just like you did everything in one line. You did everything yeah. It was great. It was, like, the best I thing. Shrink it out in, like, seven, eight lines. You did everything in just one line. Yeah, I'd never seen it. It was really cool. It's so like, annoying. It, it was so cool. <laughs> it was so annoying. It was like, wow. So <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, I was getting annoyed because I kept running into an issue where we were, like, I, we'd set the, the like, oh, number for each. Like, we had, like, a placeholder for each subarray, and I set it to zero. <laughs> And then there was like another, there was one where it's all negative, like all the integers were negative. It would not return. So I had this like super nested double if like within an else. <laughs> and like, I was so annoyed. <laughs> it was so bad. Like it, that gar go it was code was so garbage. Long, <laughs> but like it passed. So I, you know, but then he, he came in and showed us. I was like, oh yeah, you just do that. <laughs> okay. 45 <laughs> minutes of my life wasted. Cool. <laughs> So the more you like, you get comp uh, like your complexity in like programming increases, the more shorter your code will be. Yeah, I can that's see that. That's 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 like that's the thing. Like do you use like when you you the point I'm trying to like um work more on functional um um programming. So when when I um, um come up with when I um try, when I'm trying to software, I think functionally, not imperatively. I didn't see imperatively now. So I'm trying to like shift. Well, the shift is not that easy because I don't really um, know how to use um, map, filter, and um, I don't know where to use I know where to use them, but I don't usually really think to that because I'm not really sure about how to use them well. So I just want to like waste time on 
Yeah, one of the things that like I learned going through, and I fact just recently like kind of like it finally clicked, was like you know before when you loop through a uh, an array and like say you wanted a new array with some stuff out of the old array, like I would always do it by a for loop, and then like I discovered oh well you could do for each, and put a function in there and then loop through, hey, it. Hey, hey, hey. and then I was like oh, okay, and then like I discovered hey, map, hey. and I'm like oh okay well map makes it even easier, <laughs> and then filter makes it even easier. Because, and then we were, know, yeah, we were trying to figure out it like so. Technically, I think performance-wise, a for loop is faster. Yeah, no, than, for loop is faster than any like for loop and for so like for, for one while loop are faster than any of like the. But it's rest. negligible, right? Like unless you're doing like a thousand like you know arrays yeah, or thousand. Size of, things. Size yeah. of the data structure is, is 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 big that. You just have to use for a while. Loop. Yeah, like if you're looping through like Facebook followers or so, something like that. Right, exactly. <laughs> Constantly, at a, yeah, within a minute, like doing a, you need to do it. The, yeah, the time would, would, you know, be shortened if you just did for loops. Going to, you, just, you just need to know when to use these things. Mm. That's like, you'll be like, that's like you knowing, you knowing when to use the particular thing and when, to, when not to use this. That's when you have actually, well, that's when you improve better. You don't just do things because that's the, this is the only way I know how to do it. That would help. It was like flexible. Yeah, it's just like an extra, you know, bullet. Basically, another way that you could show somebody to get an answer done. But yeah. And also explain like that is probably not the most efficient. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, I'll share my screen again to uh, for you okay. to go camp. Let me. All right. Um. Let's see here. So let me show you uh, Edibit real quick because I've been doing challenges on this. One thing I like about the Edibit challenges is like they give you this little challenge here and then like here's where you type in your code and you just check it. Yeah. Um, but what I like about it is this resources. So like you can even look at the resources and see what methods are helpful to other people. Oh, nice like That's reduce cool. while loop awesome. for loop you know and then these Every, like within the answers like there's obviously there's multiple ways to answer it so yeah cool. so you, you can click on this and it'll take you to a web page that tells you about that and a lot of them are the mozilla docs wow. so, so john like i suggest coming to this site and like starting with the easiest challenges and and going through them because you can learn a lot um let's go back to here Okay, return the length of the longest word in the provided sentence. Your response should be a number. Okay, so we'll do this the long way. <laughs> so first we need an array. Um, Wonder, let's see. New array equals string dot split. Split it each space. Then sort. See if I can remember how sort works. Uh, I think. Just read through the um, caption. Um, uh, they're sorted in ascending. Or oh, ASCII character order. I wonder if I could do like A is greater than B and it would be from largest to smallest. I wonder if that'll work. Let's try to do it the way you think you should. Hey, let me console log new array to see what it looks like. <laughs> nothing. Uh, nothing. Uh, okay, uh, what can you use After submitting it to the channel array, then um, the way we did it was that we now we created a separate value which we use in comparing the length of each, each uh, of element in the array. I think you should be that with them. You always, and you can always go back to Mozilla to look for something to look for a method to like make it shorter. Just do it that way first. 
Uh, let me look up the sort. <laughs> See how it works. Okay. Oh, this is pretty. Yeah, I guess it would. Um, so it sorts it alphabetically. So is this, let's see, numeric sort. Sorts values of strings. Apple, so. But couldn't you put the length? Well, well, we are, well, well we are sorting the length. Of, yeah, so you can put like, a dot length. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Is greater than B dot length. No, that doesn't work. No, we go back to the go back to the uh, array so, um, yeah. uh, so this takes a function. Return a minus b. Oh yeah, that needs it there. That's the first parameter. It's a callback function. Yeah, you can okay. Okay. Just try to take if you can pass it um, an array into a sort. No, try to uh, look 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 up array 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 objects in um. Array object in Mozilla. So let's try to look for functions that we um, a function that we are used to work with arrays uh, in this part to to, to, part to do this um, uh, challenge. Look up array object in Mozilla. So let's try to uh, the sidebar. Let's, um, um just uh, uh over 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 them so we can read through um spice i use it already i read i read the title so the sort Okay, let me, um, the sort method uh, sorts the element of an array in place and returns the array. The default, no, sort just arranges arrange the thing and it doesn't compare anything. So I don't think it should work here. So let's try to look for something that would compare the length. Uh, if A is greater than B by the ordering criteria, return one. So let me try this. Turn a dot length. I just want to see what this does. Hey guys, you guys haven't finished ES six yet, uh, or or have you? Nothing. We haven't even started. We haven't started ES six. Okay. Yeah. I was wondering, do you guys want to start a project right quick? I just asked Wolfie, uh, and he get uh, to give us like uh, two projects for like the next that'll take about two days for like three guys. So I figure you three guys, you feel me? You guys can just work on these two projects right here, like or you guys can pick one of them to work on, and see. You okay. Know. Okay. So, Send. Let's. Let's. What do you guys think? I don't. Know. What kind of projects are they? JavaScript. It's um. One, I'm reading it right now. One says event booking app. <clears throat> Share your screen. Okay. You're saying your face again. You see my screen now? Okay, yeah. <clears throat> All right, so we uh, let's see.
intersection of the council well, I know all this is definitely beyond what we've gone through in free code camp. <laughs> you said beyond? You said uh, yeah, yeah, this is all beyond. It's, this is mixing, um, um, like mixing HTML, CSS, and, and um, JavaScript. Okay. All right. Yeah, there's like. The UI doesn't be like we can always just ignore the UI. I think we're just going to like more closely more on the on the uh, I think on the JavaScript part. Like close close that uh that image preview. Picture. It's just maybe we should just the UI doesn't we don't have to like make it look this fine. We can always just put buttons and not even style them. But like there's just the function, like the app. Uh, um, yeah, um, that's APIs. I haven't even touched APIs yet. Yeah, and then and then he said I said give me one. Now. API and one, one API one. API is not that crazy, right? Like just the function, like it's as long as you're aware of what, what functions you have available for it. Yeah, and that's the thing. I've just, I've never reached that it's, level of job. There's a lot of loop, like it, I've noticed, especially like messing around with some of yeah, looping. Also. Are you saying, DK? I think I've not worked on API before, so. So, I don't know. Scroll back up, John, to the requirements. See, um, as, as I did about that, we can always, even if we don't, uh, 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 <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. we can always work on, we can always work on it, and even if like guest talk, we still learn something from what you have done. And I know always the best practice that from some of the developers I've talked to is really just kind of like create a static site first, mm -hmm. and then, um, like get it the way you want it to look and then like it's pretty it I mean obviously depending on the API it's pretty easy to like essentially take where that static like text that or image or whatever you're gonna put there and just replace it with a call uh, to that API so worst case you you create something static that has no like functionality and then just kind of work your way into okay. that way you've, you've gotten half of it done okay to test the API All right, I think here's the non API one. No, yeah, that, that bottom one's API. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because he's got the API down at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, it's more like an I, probably <laughs> an IMDb like thing. You guys want to give one of them a shot? Well, like so I was saying, I was looking at the first one. Most of that is DOM manipulation. You yeah, know, I, think, add I stuff. think we're going to walk through the first one. Um, Next two days. 12 hours, three men, JavaScript. <laughs> Page. Be able to delete events from the list. Be able to it's change like events. To -do list app. Yeah, like it's pretty app. much like a to-do list. The carousel, I'm unsure about. Um, probably would have to like research that, how to do a carousel in JavaScript. Yeah, you should probably host all this on Heroku. I don't even know how to use Heroku. I've never even tried it. I'm sure it's like uh, kind of it? yeah. Like there's a there's a uh, there's a client that you can use from the command line to like host a, a Heroku, and they have doc they have pretty good documentation to get everything. If not, there's like a bunch of articles as well that kind of helps. I did a long time ago, like years ago. But um, do you guys want to get started on that now? Like this is kind of what we've been going through, right? Not really. Been even <laughs> working with delete. <laughs> So, John, would you be able to do that? Uh, I'll walk through it. <clears throat> so, it says event booking app. Users will be able to create event with the following data. So, I've worked with creating data because that's like the index, right? What do you mean? Or is that like SQL? Well, no, it's not SQL. You would have to take an input from... Like your HTML. Stuff. So like you would have a form on your HTML where each form you would have a title, description, and date. And then in your JavaScript, when they hit submit, whatever was typed into the title would go into a variable for title. And then whatever was typed in for description would go into a variable for description. Yeah. And then and it they, all depends. You can yeah. you can technically like create a JSON object in there to be like yeah. the database 
rather yeah, than the, the real database, or you yeah, can cache it in the browser. Now go step in the browser, like using the data structure to like yeah, just use a JSON object to like mock what like so an API like it would be the equivalent of an API call where you're pulling that data and like looping through and putting it onto the page. Mm. You have to like do it. You can just like try to work on it. Like um. so, I mean, you guys are you guys are talking about it. Why don't you guys start getting this done like right now? <laughs> I like that he pushes. He's he's not going to involved at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, why don't you guys get on this? <laughs> I mean, John's like, like this. This sounds easy from the way you guys are talking about it. Like, yeah, sure. it's easy to talk about it. Okay, okay. okay let's just talk about it. Right, like, I'll tell you this, John. You do the HTML on it, and we'll do the JavaScript. Yeah, okay. I'll do the HTML on it. You do the HTML and CSS, and then we'll put the JavaScript. Oh, all this stuff right here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Not bad. <laughs> have you messed with media? It's not. It doesn't have to like be like this exactly. Just something we can use. Like just. Can yeah, you guys start getting that. How, how fast should I get the HTML and CSS done? I mean, just you can literally just do like an HTML, like throw in HTML and then like do the HTML, like give it like 15, 20 minutes and then like slowly work on the CSS because we can, like, as long as we have HTML elements oh, okay, cool. IDs and classes, we can still do like yeah. stuff. We can still do the JavaScript part. Make sure you put IDs and classes in it, John. Yes, yeah. please. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm gonna use the I'm gonna use the I'm gonna use the template. I'm gonna use the template. The template. No, no, you gotta code that from scratch, man. <laughs> no, no, no templates, John. No templates. It's gotta be Bootstrap. No, you can use Bootstrap. You can use the Bootstrap library, but, but you can't yeah, you use can the template. Use, that's Look, I'm gonna show you the template. It's a super easy template. No, no, no. You don't use a template. <laughs> <laughs> You don't oh, use a template. Yeah, that, that feels like cheating. If you're it is it. cheating. <laughs> I'm, I got, oh, man. Come on, man. You, you've <laughs> learned HTML and CSS. You can do it. that. It can't take more than, I'm like, 15, 20 minutes. Template. Those, stru those structure the HTML, and we can, we can work on that. <laughs> you use Bootstrap, but you got to code it yourself into your HTML. And all you got to do is link to the Bootstrap MDM. Yeah. No, but I don't. I, I to use Bootstrap, though. I thought you knew how to use Bootstrap. <laughs> With the template, I just copy and paste everything, dude. Man, that ain't that ain't that that that's not uh, creating, man. That's just copying, it's moving stuff around. <laughs> the boy, like, you understand what you're moving. I understand what I'm moving. It's a lot of stuff, though. <laughs> that's why I'm learning grid and flexbox. I'm talking about. I should use that. All right, yeah, I'm gonna use grid and flexbox with this. This will be fun. I don't think you've even added me to the um to the um GitHub for like the W three school W three. Developed. The W three develops cohorts. No, as in the, the GitHub, we haven't added it to. I haven't added anybody. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta add you guys to it. We gotta work on some projects, though. Um, I gotta add you guys to the uh, um, to the cohorts too. Send you guys that link. Yeah, I mean cohorts, cohorts two, yeah, two or so. All right, let me make, I'm gonna make this for you guys real quick, man. Okay. So are you, are you guys telling me you can't get started until I make the HTML and CSS? Yeah, we have to like get the, like, you know, just work on the HTML. Wow. And why, why don't you guys, you guys don't know HTML and CSS? We do, but you have to still, you have to like add something to this, can you? <laughs> 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 Uh, I mean, all right. Um, all right, let's get it. So, um, should I send you my <clears throat> my GitHub of user? Oh yeah, the uh, chat send that to me. My you. Yeah, a lot of people right now. A lot of things. I definitely need to get a faster processor. I know, man. Hostage, man. Oh, you got me hostage in here. He's got me hostage in here, man. He said I can't leave until I get the landing page up. <laughs> and now these guys are saying they're not. What's up? What's going on here? You guys are saying I, you guys aren't going to start the project until I freaking put up this this thing right here. You're saying I can't I can't leave until I put up that old 
<laughs> and these guys, I can't even use the template. I got, I got to code it from scratch. They're being all fancy. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I said, um, um, when it's um, ugly and stuff, I'm gonna catch it. Okay, take like, chucks. Uh, it's not even yeah. two columns, man. But it is. I thought it was two columns. Like, no, man, it's one column, but you put them next to each other with grid. You're still one column, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, John, I've, I've, I've sent my uh, username to the chat. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think we should all work on this together. We should like yeah, live together. So everybody so you should. Can, you, can, you can share a screen for the. Uh, yeah, the everybody screen. should hop on uh the, the what's it called the live HTML. What's it called? The, the I'm sorry the. What is this thing called? VS Code Live Code together. We're gonna code stuff together. Plugin. <laughs> I don't know the name of the plugin. It's got a plugin on here. It's like Teletype for Atom. Actually, okay. No, not Teletype, but it's it's the one for, you have. You have a uh, VS Code. No, I have VS Code, but I don't use this. I use I, I use Atom instead. All right, let's use let's use let's use uh let's use um VS Code. And that's all you use Teletype. Okay, so what's the plugin? Uh, we're gonna work on the on this first project, the first one, the event booking app. So okay. to create a repository, I'll create the I'll create the repository. Uh, let's see. All right, so we're dragons. So yeah, this is the university. So I think I sent everybody an email for the invite to Dragons University. Check your emails um, if you haven't. Um, and uh, this will be, I gotta give this my thanks, man. That was nice, bro, I appreciate that, dude.
All right, uh, let's see. Okay, this, so you guys should all be able to, uh, like, I don't know, you guys should all be able to collaborate on this. Oh, am I sharing my screen? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. So sorry, dude. Once I get home, I'm going to sleep. You haven't added me as a collaborator. No. Has your team picked their project manager yet? What'd you say? Has your team picked the project manager yet? Um, yes, we did. Did you guys post your project manager uh, status in the... Um, in the project manager section? Channel on Discord? Huh? I'm trying to. Um, have you, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Have you, um, all right, so basically in the resources, like there's a part that says, that said to, uh, like once you guys, once your team picks a collaborator, or once your team picks a project uh, manager for your team and you guys choose it, I say, I'm, Today's the 13th. I was supposed to send out the check-in yesterday. I got a lot of duty, bro. I gotta go. Dang, it's 8 o'clock, bro. My sleep schedule's messed up right now. Anyways. Uh... I gotta think of uh, what I gotta do, man. I got a lot to do right now. No, where are my 
gonna go what do I have to do right now? Okay, uh, John, the project manager should be the one to um, post the listed in, in the uh, project manager's um, channel, right? Um, say that one more time. Okay. The project manager should be the one to post um, the stuff to the project manager channel. Right? Yeah, yes. I am not a project manager, like it's... Um, uh -huh. um, so I'll, I'll try to get in touch to him to... Um, it doesn't matter. You're you're a community manager. You're kind of like the project manager. I would just do. I would just post it instead. You yeah. post it instead. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. I should I should change that then. Uh, I should just say the team. You know, anybody in the team. I don't know. I guess, the guess. manager is uh, Ish Ish. Uh, the is Ima Ima Shu two zero five nine nine nine. You know. I'm gonna start making like some clickable, like click through web pages for the site, make it quicker. Where am I? All right, Adam. Do me a favor, Doug. Would you um, would you add DK or DK? Yeah, would you would you would you add DK in the in the and I'm gonna send you a list of the uh, uh Discord names that need to be added as well, so the both of you guys can add them together. Like I'll get like you like you guys can decide like yo, you take half, you take half. And then we're gonna add those collaborators to the cohorts repository. You guys are both gonna be admins or owners. So uh Adam give DK uh owner permission to the cohorts as well. Please. Adam are you think it's yeah. Oh snap! Really? Oh no! I think I can hear you. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, he's here, but I don't think I can hear you. Maybe he's busy with something. I don't know. Yeah. Just um, uh, type it in the chat so when he comes on, you can see. Okay. What was I saying? Hmm? What was I saying? Oh, you said you should add me to. Yeah. Oh. Give me your email. I'm gonna add you right now. What is it? I'm gonna send the I'm gonna send you the invite right now. Send me your okay. email. My email. Are you, are you GitHub? That's your GitHub username. Okay. Yeah, that's my GitHub. DKM. I got it. Okay. 
All right, so I just sent you that invite. Uh, I'll send you guys the list right now. It's not a long list. I think it's only a few people, like like a, like a, like two handfuls of people. Teams, two teams, two three teams. I gotta check. I'm gonna just go and check. Uh, Hey, for real. Next door, she don't play a 
Is this the me? Uh, am I like hosting the meeting right now? Why? Why am I hosting the meeting right now? You guys are supposed to be having the meeting. What is it? I said, why am I like hosting the meeting? I wasn't supposed to like take over the meeting. I like I don't know I, why I'm just ghosted, so I'm just trying to wait on him. Like I think only three of us are online, Pat, you and I. Yeah. Adam, Adam is off, so I don't know. I'm just trying to wait on him a little bit. For anything. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was wondering. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> like, I, thought, I honestly, I thought I had my uh, my mic still muted. And I was like, why isn't anybody talking? Yeah, because yeah. it's only me and DK right now, and you know, I don't know, I don't know 
like where the rest of the group is at. I know Elliot's busy. Um, I mean, Elliot hasn't really been – he hasn't been following along with the JavaScript. And then Tech Mino, she – I switched her over to the HTML section. She's not ready for JavaScript. Yeah, and – Her is too much to miss. Yeah. And, like, you know, it's just, just – It's such a small group right now. It's, you know – It's good, though. For the JavaScript. That's, that's good. Right, right. But at the same time, it's, you know – like, are we all learning together? Because I know we're all at different levels of JavaScript. I mean, I know DK is ahead of me in JavaScript and Adam as well. But that's okay because this is like they're they you think they're ahead, but they're you guys are really all at the same same like like, like let's say like seventy nine, eighty, eighty one, <laughs> you know, seventy seven. Nine. Well, Adam, Adam is full like, Same like, range. Like forty like percent. Adam is like hundred. <laughs> compared to Adam is far ahead though. So, like me, I like compare compare yourself from them to me. <laughs> <laughs> but Adam, Adam is far ahead though. So that's probably. yeah. But you know, it's like you guys, you guys got it. You guys got it, man. You can't doubt yourselves. You guys know you got it. You guys know you got it, man. Um, but yeah, dude. Like, I think you guys can build that project. I'm pretty sure you guys can, because you guys are able to talk to your... work. It might not be today, but we'll work on something, like, maybe tomorrow. Work on, I'm sure we'll work on something this week. I think we tried to work on something this week. You know, you just brought it up like right now. So yeah, like, I gotta see what happened to Adam. What happened to Adam? Or something. Well, I didn't think about it. So since it's out, it's out there. Then we can always work on it tomorrow or something. Okay. Yeah. Work. I don't. I don't think um, anybody's like most of the guys are off. Only if they come back online though. And when they come back online, then we can all discuss on it. Okay. Yeah. I wish I wouldn't miss the chair. I feel like I kind of killed the whatever was going on with the algorithms, man. I'm sorry. Why don't you guys continue that, dude? What is it? Well, uh, why don't you guys continue what you guys are doing with the algorithms? Oh, okay, okay. Um, okay. Yeah, well, I don't know. Probably be psyched if he sees that when he comes back. Dude. Yeah. Oh, snap, what's going on? <laughs> what did I miss? <laughs> but, hey, you know, we were talking about Lambda School yesterday. Um, I went ahead and like filled out an application because I wanted to see like what was it, like what it's all about. And they give you like a whole course of shit to do before you even start. Yeah. Yeah. Like their their next run starts the eighteenth of March, and it's a six month course. What you gonna do? I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I'm gonna go along with it or not. But uh, you know, if if I feel like you know, I can do it in six months, and then I'll be set with a web development job, then you know, I'm good with that. Yeah, it's you know, cost you know, like a student loan almost. Um. But not quite as much as a student loan. But you're still looking at, you know, probably for two years, it's probably going to cost you about $16,000. Hey, man. That's, uh, you know, like, if it works, right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, if it gets you in there. Because, like, you know, like, sometimes, like, I worry, like, you know, I got, I know what I need to know, but, like, the guidance to actually getting a job, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's the point. Like, actually, I have like um, an outline of what I need to know to get like the level. I'm, I mean, that, but like just to like do those things. Like this, I, time, time will actually tell us. That's like a lot of things that I get there. Feel, like those of the you learn within two weeks, like like take like like year plus, like learn learn it to like level, but to get like the completed to like to, like like. So, like the higher level, we have to like take, take some time too. So, just like if you're consistent with it, and at least it should, you should like a year time or or, or more, it should be it should be good. It should be somewhere. It should be somewhere. So yeah, it's like you know, how long you know does it take? Because it's, I mean, it's six months. The boot camp, the Lambda School boot camp, is six months long. If you do it full time. So that's that's a long time of learning. That's eight to five every day, Monday through Friday of learning. For, Do you go to like a campus or something? No, 
you work it's remote you do it from your computer oh so, like the motivation will be you won't be like more today because you're not like going you're not moving <laughs> Well, if you think it's going to be like uh, beneficial for you in the long run, I I, I think you do. And you know, because like starting out, I was like, you know, kind of like, oh, I don't need a boot camp. I can learn all this on my own, and you know, end up with a job. That'd be no problem. But then, like, the more and more I've gotten into it, it's like, you know, there's so much to learn. There's so much. But to it's learn. like the things that they're like in between the learning that we aren't picking up on that I wonder about. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, because when you're learning the code, you learn all the technical stuff and all that, but like, are we really learning how these companies operate and work? And, right. Right. you know, what, what it's like to work in their workflow and culture and all that, so. Well, you know, each company differs, so. Mm -hmm. you know, like, oh, I think each company, like, you actually, you, you have to learn their culture when you even get there. You don't like, not so you have to like know every, everything. There's, there's no way you, um, uh, the first job you most likely be a junior developer. So you don't have to like know everything before you can get that job. Right. So you have to know something, like you have to like get to a level. Yeah, it's definitely a big difference than working on your own. No doubt about it. There's nothing. Yeah, they're going to boom you, boom you from there onwards. So, you have to know something before you actually, um, before you are able to get the job, obviously. You have to know something to level. Yeah, so, I mean, if you think about it, it's like, okay, so if I go, you know, don't go the boot camp route and say, screw it, I'm going to spend eight to five every day doing nothing but coding. That takes a shitload of willpower. But you know, you know, you know, the thing is like, the thing is like, you, we have to, we have to be going through these uh, Mozilla projects as well. That, that's the problem. We're not going through them. And it's partly because of me. So I think besides, don't wait for me, guys. I think you guys should just go through this stuff. Go through, start going through the Mozilla projects when I'm not like, and just getting through those. I'm sorry to be your biggest weakness, but for the three of you, that's, that's who's my JavaScript guys right now. I have three JavaScript guys and it's you guys. No. That's why you guys are the ones I was talking about with the project. Yeah, um, I mean, to tell you the truth, like, I'm, like, real iffy about, you know, that. And th that's a tough decision to make, you know. Do you want to spend the money to do that? Um, but at the same time, is like, can I force myself to do that time frame? You know what? Give, I say give yourself this month. Give yourself this month. Decide at the end of the month. Decide at the end of the month. Mm-hmm. Be it. Give yourself a month's time. Three months, three weeks, well, two weeks time. Dang, is it 1330? Well, no, we're <laughs> on the sixth. It seems like it's been a long time, but we started on the seventh. So, about seven, seven days in. We're seven days in, dude. Come on. First project, you know? Mm -hmm. we, for me, it's my first week doing JavaScript. Now I can kind of, <laughs> you, know, you guys have been through this one yeah. time. Two times. Like, now, what you guys got to do is go through the, like, oh. the my HTML guys and stop not doing it because I'm not here. I, don't wait on me, bro. It do, it's not wait on W3 developers. It's W3 developers. That means the W3 developers are getting shit done without W3 developers. Because W, I don't know, man. I don't know what it means. But you get. <laughs> yeah, I, I really think that, like, you know, I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try to do, you know, starting tomorrow, like, since I'm out of work right now, um, uh -huh. to do eight hours of nothing but code without getting distracted. Uh -huh. So, all right, so tomorrow, what you guys are going to have to work on tomorrow is uh, the, or today, why don't you guys finish that today? Start going through the Mozilla JavaScript. Start, to start knocking it out. Start knocking it out, like, right now, guys. Like, someone pull up their screen, we're recording. Oh, we, yeah, we're still recording, and just knock that out without me, because I got a bunch of other stuff I got to do, but, you know, I'm going to be watching it. So now I need, like, I'm going to be like the rest of these guys. I'm going to need the videos. So, yo, please, can you guys finish this? Hey, guys, Here. I'm... I'm going to be right back. It's Adam. I'm going to be right back. Um, I have a cohort meeting that I scheduled today, so it's going to oh, be sweet, about an hour. Dude, go handle that stuff, dude. But I'll be right back, and then whatever we're doing, I'll, I'll jump right on. Oh, <laughs> man. Get it, man. Yeah. Get Sorry, it. guys. I, don't want to, I know it's like slim pickings today. Go get, get it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, all right. Well, uh, yeah. 
I think you guys, both of you guys, you guys should start, start going through the rest of that, through the rest of the JavaScript you left off. But. Um, because technically we still haven't finished JavaScript, the basics. So we have to finish those two parts. We have to finish, uh, we, I think we should finish the first one today and tomorrow, today, because we still have eight, nine, seven, eight, twelve. we have about three and a half hours left. So we're going to spend the next three and a half hours on that. I'm going to show you guys. Bro, I know my HTML guys next month, bro. Bro, I'm afraid. I'm scared to see what they're going to accomplish next month with my JavaScript, dude. Because, like, dude, they're just taking off on that, bro. Like, and everybody that shows up, shows up, dude. You know, like, the main people that show up, like, like the three or four or five, like, it's kind of like five or six. But it's, like, really, like, three to four, you know. And, uh, and one other guy actually st showed up today then. And so, yeah, dude, it's, it's looking really nice, dude. Like, they're building all of the JavaScript, all of the HTML stuff as they go. And it's their first week, and they're already on forms. And uh, they're finishing that up, and they've built everything on there, bro. <laughs> and so, they've already, they've, bro, they've already built the emails. They said in the list of homework that I gave them, they already built the emails in, in week one, dude. Week one. All right, so now they, they're just going through all this stuff. Recording it. Now they're gonna start the. Uh, what are they starting? They're starting the. So they already finished the CSS basics, but I told them to hold up and start going through the HTML. On uh, for, for the you know the HTML on uh, Mozilla, and finish that. So they're finishing it up that now, and now they're gonna start going through CSS, dude. They said they feel like their brains gonna explode, but they get it. <laughs> um, but yeah, dude. So. Next, they're going through the introduction to CSS, uh, but they're gonna, they're gonna, they, so they already did the basics, but they're gonna, I'm gonna have to figure out how to get them to go through this like step by step. So what I'm probably gonna have them do is like, since there's four parts on free code camp and there's four parts to this, I don't know, I'll probably just have it go like that. Yep, something like that. Um, yeah, so basically for us, we're gonna be doing the same thing. So you guys are gonna for you guys, you guys are gonna be doing the same thing. Shoot, I might have to catch, I might have to do another JavaScript core next month, man, and let you guys, man, for real, because <laughs> I might do it with these guys. <laughs> for real, have you guys keep on because you guys are gonna be so far ahead, dude. Oh, I think about it, three weeks, dude. We did all one that. Thing, one thing I, I noticed that you're like you have a lot going on, so you're a bit distracted, like. Finding the time to actually learn JavaScript is really hard for you. So one thing I, mm -hmm. I would just advise is that even if it's just an hour, try to sacrifice like day after day from time to time to work on just JavaScript. And with time, you can if you have, if you add one hour for like maybe let's say a month, that that that, that would be something. Okay. So that, that's what I would have to say. So like with time, without you even sacrificing too much time per day, we didn't few months like you like would have gotten some on javascript all right that's what i'm gonna do then i like that idea that's it i like that idea but that's what we do that's what we do every that's yeah that's why we do this that's our javascript you know we study we, we get more than an hour but i, I see what you're saying dude. don't even you if, on your phone, like you it doesn't hurt to just yeah. do, just do something on javascript just you can time yourself then when it's just right, catch hard, up. go back I mean, to I catch up, you guys haven't even passed me but you guys are about to start passing me like right now so um, yeah, so why don't you guys start heading over to where we left off the other day? I believe we left off after troubleshooting, so it's storing the information you need. Okay. Yes. So these are you guys' projects for now. You guys are be going through. I want you guys to go through this before you guys begin ES six. I want. I need you guys to go through, like the old um, JavaScript building blocks. I was. Yeah, I need you guys to go through the first steps in the building blocks. Okay. You guys worked with objects at all? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we worked. Yeah, we worked and, I need you to, and I need you guys to go through objects. 
Yeah. Okay, so we'll go to like three. three yeah. Uh, yeah, go through three of them because we've already started the basics. So this is all the basics. Okay. okay. All right. So yeah, I need you guys to start that like right now. So go ahead, open up. Uh, uh, should I share my screen or you should, you you share your screen? Uh. I'm about, I'm about to get out of here. I got I got a lot of stuff to do. You guys to record, and I don't want to distract you guys. All right, I got it. Thank you, dude. All right, so I got your uh, I got your emails. I gotta send you guys the invoice. I gotta send you guys uh the list. Go okay, guys. I gotta send the list of. Uh, all right, and that's it. And then you guys gotta just email those guys. Should I send my email also? But I, we did that already. So all you guys got to do now is just record these. And Pat, when you get done recording them, if you would just upload them to uh, YouTube, like I would appreciate that, dude. And do I have uh, I'm, I'm gonna give access you, to the site? I'm going to give it to you right now. As soon as I get off, or right. I'm going to do that. Yeah, just send it to me in Discord. Uh, I think you should be able to just, like, when, once you get there, like a brand name for W3 Develop should, like, pop up, and you should have access to it. Okay. Yeah, W Three Developers is a brand uh, on get on YouTube, not like the personal thing. So it should just pop up. But once I'll give you, I'm, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you access. You'll have access before the end of the day. Before okay. you before you have to upload it. All right. Um. So. So we are on. Variables. Yeah, storing the information in variables. After reading the last couple of articles, you should know what JavaScript is, what it can do for you, and how to use it alongside other web technologies, what its main features look like from a high level. In this article, we will get down to the real basics, looking at how to work with the most basic building blocks of JavaScript variables. Throughout this article, you'll be asked to type in lines of code to test your understanding of content. If you're using a desktop browser, the best place to type your sample code is the browser's JavaScript console. However, we have also provided a simple JavaScript console embedded in the page below for you to enter this code into, in case you are not using a browser with a JavaScript console easily available. Um, what is a variable? A variable is a container for value, like a number we might use in a sum or a string that we might use as part of a sentence. One special thing about variables is that their contained values can change. Let's look at this simple example. So button, press me, uh, button, document query selector button. Uh, on click, it'll run this function, which will prompt what is your name, and then it'll alert uh, hello with your name, and then nice to see you. So click press me, what is your name? Patrick, hit OK, and it says hello, Patrick, nice to see you. In the example, pressing the button runs a couple lines of code. First line pops a box up on the screen that asks the reader to enter their name, then stores a value in a variable. The second line displays a welcome message that includes their name taken from the variable value. To understand why this is so useful, let's think about how we write this example without using a variable. It would end up looking like this. So prompt, what is your name? If it's this, this, yes. Yeah, a bunch of else if statements here for different names. You may not fully understand the syntax we are using yet, but you should be able to get the idea. If we don't have variables av available, we'd have to implement a giant code block that checked what the inner name was and then displayed the appropriate message for that name. This is obviously really inefficient. The code is a lot bigger, even only for five choices, and it just wouldn't work. You couldn't possibly store all the possible choices. Variables make sense, as and as you learn more about JavaScript, they will start to become second nature. Another special thing about variables is that they contain just about anything, not just strings and numbers. Variables can also contain complex data and even entire functions to do amazing things. You'll learn about this more as you go along. Note, we say variables contain values. This is an important distinction to make. Variables aren't the values themselves, they are the containers for the values. You can think of them as being little cardboard boxes that you can store things in, such as this box and this box and this box. To use a variable, you've got to create it. 
more accurately, let we call this declaring the variable. To do this, we type the keyword var or let, followed by the name you want to call your variable, such as let my name or let my age. Here we are creating two variables called my name and my age. Try typing these lines in now in your web browser console or in the below console. Uh, you can open this console in a separate tab. Um, after that, try creating a variable too with your own name choices. So let my name undefined, let my age undefined, let dog, let cat. In JavaScript, all code instructions should end with a semicolon. Your code may work correctly for a single lines, but probably won't when you're writing multiple lines of code together. Try to get in the habit of using it. You can test whether these values now exist in the execution environment by just typing the variable's name, such as my name or my age. They currently have no value, they are empty containers. When you, empty, when you enter the variable names, you should get a value of undefined returned. If they don't exist, you'll get an error message. Try typing in Scooby-Doo. So, Scooby-Doo. Error, Scooby-Doo is not defined. Note, don't confuse a variable that exists but has no value defined with a variable that doesn't exist at all. They are very different things. In the box analogy you saw above, not existing would mean there is no box for a value to go in. No value defined would, be, would mean that there is a box, but it has no value inside of it. Once you declared a variable, you can initialize it with a value. You can do this by typing the variable name, followed by an equal sign, followed by the value you want to give it. For example, my name equals Chris, my age equals 37. Try going back to the console now and typing in these lines. You see the value you assigned the variable returned in the console to confirm it in each case. Again, you can return your variable values by simply typing their name into the console. So let's go to the console and let my name equal Patrick. Let my age equal 39. So my name, Patrick. My age, 39. You can declare and initialize a variable at the same time like this. Let my dog equal river. This is probably what you'll do most of the time as it is quicker than doing the two actions on two separate lines. Difference between var and let. At this point, you may be thinking, why do we need two keywords for defining variables? Why have var and let? The reasons are somewhat historical. Back when JavaScript was first created, there was only var. This works fine, basically fine in most cases, but it has some issues in the way it works. Its design can sometimes be confusing or downright annoying. So let was created in modern versions of JavaScript, a new keyword for creating variables that works somewhat differently to var, fixing its issues in the process. A couple of simple differences are explained below. We won't go into all the differences now, but you can start to discover them as you learn more about JavaScript. If you really want to read about them now, feel free to check out our let reference page. For a start, you will write a multi-line JavaScript program that declares and initializes a variable. You can actually declare a variable with var after you initialize it, and it will still work. For example, my name equals Chris, function console log my name, and then calling it log name here, and then they call or redeclare my variable here. This won't work when typing individual lines into a JavaScript console, just when we're running multiple lines of JavaScript in a web document. This works because of hoisting. Read var hoisting for more detail on the subject. Hoisting no longer works with let. If we change var to let in the above example, it would fail with an error. This is a good thing. Declaring a variable after you initialize it makes it for confusing, harder to understand code. Secondly, when you use var, you can declare the same variable as many times as you like, but with let, you can't. The following would work. Var my name is Chris, var, now, var my name equals Bob. 
but the following would throw an error on the second line. Let my name equals Chris and let my name equals Bob. You have to do this instead. Let my name equal Chris, my name equals Bob. Again, this is a sensible language decision. There is no reason to redeclare variables. It just makes things more confusing. For these reasons and more, we recommend that you use let as much as possible in your code rather than var. There is no reason to use var unless you need to support old versions of Internet Explorer with your code. It doesn't support let until version 11. The model, the modern Windows Edge browser supports let just fine. Note, we are currently in the process of updating the course to use let rather than var, bear with us. Once a variable has been initialized with a value, you can change or update that value by simply giving it a different value. Try entering the following lines on your console. So, my name equals Bob. Invalid or unexpected token. Oh, that's what I did. My name equals Bob. Bob. My name age equals 40. And aside on variable naming rules, you can call a variable pretty much anything you like, but there are limitations. Generally, you should just stick to using Latin characters and the underscore. You shouldn't use other characters because they may cause errors or be hard to understand for an international audience. Don't use underscores at the start of variable names. This is used in certain JavaScript constructs to mean specific things, so it may get confusing. Um, don't use numbers at the start of variables. This isn't allowed and will cause an error. A safe convention to stick with is so-called lower camel case, where you stick together multiple words using lower camel case or lowercase for the first word and then capitalize subsequent words. We've been using this variable name in this article so far. Uh, making variable names intuitive so they describe the data that it contains. Don't just use single letters, numbers, or big long phrases. Variables are case sensitive, so my age, all lowercase, is different than my age, camel case. One last point. You'll need to avoid using JavaScript reserved words as your variable names. By this we mean words that make up the actual syntax of JavaScript. You can't use words like var, function, let, or, and for as variable names. Browsers will recognize them as different code items, so you'll get errors. You can find a fairly complete list of reserved keywords to avoid at lexical grammar keywords. Good name examples, age, my age, init, initial color, final output value, audio one, audio two. Bad name examples, one, a, underscore 12, my age, lowercase, all caps, my age, var, document, random stuff. This is a really long, stupid variable line name, variable name, man. <laughs> um, error prone name examples, var, document. Try creating a few more variables now with the above guidance in mind. I'm not gonna do that because I pretty much got that. <laughs> um, there are a few different types of data we can store in variables. In this section, we'll describe these in brief, then in future articles, you'll learn about them in more detail. So far, we've looked at the first two, but there are others. Numbers, you can store numbers in variables, either whole numbers like 30, also called integers, or decimal numbers like 2.456, also called floats or floating point numbers. You don't need to declare variable types. In JavaScript, unlike some other programming languages, when you give a variable a number value, you don't include quotes. Um, Strings are like pieces of text. When you give a variable a string value, you need to wrap it in single or double quote marks, otherwise JavaScript will try to interpret it as another variable name. Booleans, booleans are true false values. They can have two values, true or false. These are generally used to test the condition after which the code is run as appropriate. So for example, a simple case would be let I am alive equal true, whereas in reality, it used to be more like this, let test equal six is less than three. This is using the less than operator to test whether six is less than three. As you might expect, it will return false because six is not less than three. You will learn a lot more about such operators later in the course. An array is a single object that contains multiple values enclosed in square brackets separated by commas. Try entering the following lines on your console. So 
So let's clear the console. Um, let my name array equal Chris Bob Jim. Let my number array equal ten, fifteen, forty. Oops, forty. Okay. Once these arrays are defined, you can access each value by their location within the array. Try these lines. My name array zero turns Chris. My number array two returns 40. The square brackets specify an index value corresponding to the position of the value you want returned. You might have noticed that JavaScripts, that arrays in JavaScript are zero index. First element is at index zero. You will learn more about arrays in a future article. In programming, an object is a structure of code that models a real life object. You can have a simple object that represents a box and contains information about its width, length, and height. Or you can have an object that represents a person and contains data about their name, height, weight, what language they speak, how to say hello to them, and more. Try entering the following line into your console. I'm just gonna copy paste. It's a lot less typing. Yep. Um, yeah, to retrieve the information stored in the object, you can use the following syntax. Dog dot name should return the name. We won't be looking at objects anymore for now. You can learn about those in a future module. Dynamic typing. JavaScript is a dynamically typed language, which means that unlike some other languages, you don't need to specify what data variable Oh, what data type a variable will contain? Numbers, strings, arrays, etc. For example, so, if you uh, hold on. so if you if you had categorized um, Java now, what what kind of typing is Java then? I, I wouldn't know. Um, I don't really know Java, but I mean, apparently from reading this, that some program languages you have to tell the computer like, hey, this is a number. Java is like example of program programming language that you have to like int. Yeah, you declare the data type so that um, we. Use like in Java, to, to declare an integer, use int. To declare a string, you use string. Mm -hmm. the string, the name of the string, equals to the value. Int, the name of the integer, equals to the value. So what happens, in, what happens in Java if you declare int, but you put a string in there? Will it throw an error? Yep. Interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> um, for example, if you declare a variable and give it a value in close in quotes, the browser will treat it as a string. It will still be a string even if it contains numbers, so be careful. So my number equals 500 in quotes, that's a string. Type of my number um, would be string. Uh, my number equals 500, that's a number. So type of my number would be number. Uh, try entering the four lines above into your console one by one and see what the results are. You'll notice that we are using a special operator called type of. This returns the data of the variable you pass into it. The first time it is called, it should return string, as at that point, my number contains a string, 500. Have a look, see what it returns, second time you call it. I'm not gonna do that because I know what it is. Yep. This part um, is more like introduction, so. Yeah. Well, let's, just keep, let's just finish it, we're almost done with it. Yeah, we're almost at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. ain't got much further to go on this one. <laughs> um, constants in JavaScript. Many programming languages have the concept of a constant, a value that is that <clears throat> once declared can never be changed. Yeah. There are many reasons why you want to do this. From security, uh, if a third-party script changed such values, it could cause problems, to debugging and code comprehension. It is harder to accidentally change values that shouldn't be changed and mess things up. In the early days of JavaScript, constants didn't exist. In modern JavaScript, we have the keyword const. So let's just store values that can never be changed. So const days in a week seven, const hours in a day 24. 
um, const works exactly the same way as let, except that you can't give const a new value. In the following example, the second line would throw an error. So by now you should know a reasonable bound of JavaScript variables and how to create them. In the next article, we'll focus on numbers in more detail and look how to do basic math in JavaScript. So let's go to the next one. Um, I wonder, do you want to take a break, DK? Hmm? Do you want to take a break? Yeah, I've got 10 minutes. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a yeah, 10 minute break and then we'll come okay. back to it. Okay. I'm gonna pause the video. Then I'll share my screen. Okay, we are on basic math in JavaScript. Uh, numbers and operators. At this point in the course, we'll discuss math and JavaScript, how we can use operators and other features to successfully manipulate numbers to do our bidding. Everybody loves math. Okay, maybe not. Nope. Some, <laughs> yeah, not really. Some of us like math. Some of us have hated math ever since we had to learn multiplication tables and long division in school. And some of us sit somewhere in between the two. But none of us can deny that math is a fundamental part of life that we can't get very far without. This is especially true when we are learning to program JavaScript or any other language for that matter. So much of what we do relies on processing numerical data, calculating new values, etc., that you won't be surprised to learn that JavaScript has a full featured set of math functions. This article discusses the basic parts that you need to know. Types of numbers. In programming, even the humble decimal number system that we all know so well is more complicated than you might think. We use different terms to describe different types of decimal numbers. For example, integers or whole numbers, such as these. Floats or floating point numbers have decimal points and decimal places. So like these, 12.5 and this long number. Doubles are a specific type of floating point number that have greater precision than standard floating point numbers, meaning that they are accurate to a greater number of decimal places. Um, we have different types of number systems. Decimal is base 10, meaning it uses zero to nine in each column. But we also have things like binary, the lowest level language of computers, which is all zeros and ones. Octal, which is base eight, uses zero to seven in each column. And hexadecimal, or base 16, which uses zero to nine, and then A to F in each column. You may have encountered these numbers before when setting colors in CSS. Before you start to get worried about your brain melting, stop right there. For a start, we're going to just stick to decimal numbers throughout this course. Okay. You rarely come across a need to start thinking about other types, if ever. The second bit of good news is that unlike some other programming languages, JavaScript only has one data type for numbers. You guessed the number. This means exactly whatever type of numbers you are dealing with in JavaScript, you can handle them in the, exactly the same way. Let's have a quick play with some numbers to reacquaint ourselves with basic syntax we need. Enter the commands listed below in your, job, in your developer tools, JavaScript console, or use the simple built-in console. Um, I'll probably just do this. Oh, you were supposed to open a new window. Okay, do it myself. Oops. Do this, do that, there we go. First of all, let's declare a couple of variables, initialize them with an integer and a float respectively. Then type the variable names back in to check that everything is in order. So, are my int, I'm in caps. Copy these, good formatting, but so my int, my float, there we go. Number values are typed without quote marks. Try declaring and initializing a couple more variables containing numbers before you moved on. So let my, let num1 equal 10, let num2 equal 22.1. 
Now let's check that both of our original variables are of the same data type. Uh, type, there is an operator called type of in JavaScript that does this. Enter the two values, enter the, enter the below two lines as shown. Type of my int number, type of my float number. You should get number returned in both cases. This makes things a lot easier for us than if different numbers had different data types. We had to deal with them in different ways. Phew. Um, arithmetic operators. Arithmetic operators are basic operators that we use to do sums. So you have addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, remainder, sometimes called modulo, um, but should always be called a remainder. Uh, this returns a remainder left over after you've divided the left number into a number of integer portions equal to the right number. And then you have exponent, raises a base number to the exponent power. This is the equivalent of the base number being multiplied by itself the same number of times as the exponent. It's first introduced in ECMA script 2016. Note, you'll see, you'll sometimes see numbers involved in sums referred to as operands. An operand is part of, can't read that all. It is part of an instruction representing data manipulated by the operator. For example, when you add two numbers, the numbers are the operand and the plus is the operator. You may sometimes see exponents expressed using the older math.pow method, which works in a very similar way. For example, math.pow73 is seven is the base, three is the exponent. So the result is 343, which is the same way as typing this. Seven double asterisk three, 343. We probably don't need to teach you how to do basic math but we'd like to test your understanding of the syntax involved. Try entering the examples below um, to familiarize yourself with the syntax. First try entering some sample exa examples of your own. I've already done that. Um, you, can try by also, you can also try declaring and initializing some numbers inside variables and try using those in the sums. The variables will behave exactly like the values they hold for purposes of the sum. So, we got num1 up here equal to 10. So if we hit num1 plus five, um, num1's not defined, num1 is defined. That num1? Uh, well, let's see if it'll let me do it again. That's weird. num1 plus five. Huh, this console is weird. How do you clear this console? Browser console. What was that? Use the browser console instead. Yeah, I'll use the. Uh, I'll go on music. Chrome console. So if I said what let. What console was that? What's that? Then, Who's talking? Oh, that's John. That was up. W3. Do what now? It's, it's John, W3 developers. Yeah, no, I'm saying, what were you oh, saying? No, uh, oh, no, I was saying, which, which council are you using? The one that they had built into uh, MDN. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, it was acting funny. Oh, never mind. It was telling me my, uh, my variable wasn't defined, but it was. Oh no! Yeah, you got me cracking up over here. I was like, "What the? What, what, what is he using?" <laughs> uh, all right, though. I'm gonna mute myself. Kind of loud over here. Last for this section, try entering some more complex expressions, such as five plus ten times three to be thirty-five. Stuff like that. Uh, some of this last set of sums might not give you quite the result you're expecting. The below section might explain why. 
operator precedence. Let's look at the last example from above, assuming that num2 holds a value of 50 and num1 holds a value of 10. So we'll set num1 equal to 10. Let num2 equal to 50. And then num1 plus num2 divided by 8 plus 2. So you get 18.25. As a human being, you might read this as 50 plus 10 equals 60, then 8 plus 2 equals 10, and then finally 60 divided by 10 equals 6. But the browser does 10 divided by 8 equals 1.25, then 50 plus 1.25 plus 2 equals 53.25. Weird. Um, this is because of operator precedence. Uh, oh, I typed them backwards. That's why I had a different number. So it was actually supposed to be two. There we go. Um, some operators will be applied before others when calculating the result of a sum for to as an expression in programming. Operator precedence in JavaScript is the same as taught in math classes. Multiply and divide are always done first, then add and subtract. The sum is always evaluated from left to right. If you want to override operator precedence, you can put parentheses around the parts that you want to explicitly be dealt with. So to get a result of six, put parentheses around these. And there's your six. A full list of JavaScript operators and their precedents can be found in expressions and operators. Increment and decrement. Decrement. Is it decrement or decrement? I don't know. Operators. Sometimes you'll want to repeatedly add or subtract one to or from a numeric variable value. This can be conveniently done using the increment and decrement value operators. We use plus plus in our guess the number game back in our first splash in the JavaScript article we added one to our guess count variable to keep track of how many guesses the user has left after each turn, guess count plus plus. They are most commonly used in, new, in loops, where you'll learn, which you'll learn about later in the course. For example, say you wanted to loop through a list of prices and add sales, sales tax to each one. You use a loop to go through each value in turn and do the necessary calculations for adding in the sales tax. The incrementer is used to move to the next value when needed. We've actually provided a simple example showing how this is done. Check it out live. Look at the source code to see if you can spot the incrementer. Look at the loops in detail. So let's look at the source code here. And we'll find the loop. Here it is, and there's your incrementer. There's another one down here. Let's try playing with these in your code. Uh, for start, note that you can't apply these directly to a number, which might seem strange, but we are assigning a variable, a new updated value, not operating on the value itself. The following will return an error. Yep. You can anchor all. You can only increment an existing variable. Try this. Uh, num one equals four, and then num one plus plus, and then num one as you can see is now five. Okay, strangeness number two. When you do this, you'll see a value of four return. This is because the browser returns the current value, then increments the variable. So as you see here, uh, you can see that it has been incremented if you return the variable again. The same is true as minus minus. So if you take num one minus minus, you'll get five. But if you call for num1, you'll see 4. You can make the browser do it the other way around. Increment, decrement the variable, then return the value by putting the operator at the start of the, the variable instead of at the end. Try the above examples again. Huh, I did not know that. Yeah. I learned something in this variable basics. So there you go. Um, Assignment operators are operators that assign a value to a variable. We've already used the most basic one, equals, loads of times. It simply assigns the variable on the left to the value on the right. Um, 
So x equals 3, y equals 4, x equal, equals y, so then x will equal 4. But there are some more complex types which provide useful shortcuts to keep your code neater and more efficient. The most common are listed below. So you got the plus equal addition assignment, adds the value on the right to the variable value on the left, then returns the new variable value. Same thing with subtraction assignment, multiplication assignment, and division assignment. Try typing some of the above examples in your console to get an idea how they work. In each case, if you can guess what the value is before you type it in on the second line, note that you can quite happily use other variables on the right-hand side of the expression for the example. So here you have x equals 3, y equals 4, x times equals y, so 3 times 4, x will be 12. There are a lot of other assignment operators available, but these are the basic ones you should learn for now. Active learning. In this exercise, you will manipulate some numbers and operators to change the size of the box. The box is drawn using a browser API called Canvas API. There is no need to worry about how this works. Just concentrate on the math for now. The width and height of the box are defined by the variables x and y which are both initially given a value of 50. Um, in the editable code box, there are two lines. Let me open this up in the window. So here's the code box. Uh, there are two lines marked with a comment that we'd like you to update to make each box grow or shrink to a certain size using certain operators and or values. Change the line that calculates x. So, here, so that the box is still 50 pixels wide, but the 50 is calculated using the numbers 43 and 7. So you just do 43 plus 7. Change the Y so it's 75, but the 75 is using 25 and 3. So 25 times 3. So now it's 75 high. Change the line that calculates x so the box is 250, but 250 is calculated using two numbers and the remainder modulo. Making me think here with math. So how would you get a remainder of 250? Um, remainder of 250. Wait, wait, what's the question? So they want you to calculate x so that it equals 250 using the modulo or the remainder operator. Uh, I see that again. Uh, we want to calculate um, x, so it will be 250. Mm -hmm. The x is 50 already. Right, but they want you to change it so it equals 250. Would one modulo 250 work? Uh, that doesn't look like it. It's kind of a weird question. I mean, I understand how the remainder works, you know, like this would give you one, but 250 is a large remainder. <laughs> I mean, you could always just type 250. <laughs> so they wanted it to look like. Okay, well, when we, okay, change the line that calculates, so change the line that calculates x, so box is 250 wide, but the 250 is calculated using two numbers, and the remainder module of the Okay. Uh, so That's a tough one. That's a hard math question. Uh, okay, the remainder will be 250. Um, let's say, hold on. Let's say, uh, so we are going to change, um, uh, uh, changing x, right? Mm hmm Okay, let's say, uh, uh, one, okay, let's say, let's say, hold on.
So you can't do 250 modulo 1 because that will just give you 0. No, 250 modulo 1 will give you 250. No, 1 will give you 250. No, it will give you 250. Hold on. It will give you the reality to be 0. So, um, we're going to use big numbers. So let's say 5... Uh, 550 modulo 300 give it 250. Yeah, I guess that's right. Yep. Yeah. See. Um, change the line that calculates y so the box is 150, but 150 is calculated using three numbers and the subtraction division operator. So I'm gonna get 150 times three is uh what is that? 450? That's 450. Yeah, so you could do 4, um, 45, one. plus 5. Oh, wait. No, it's subtraction they want. Okay, we, we subtract by 1 and use brackets. Dividing, yeah. Uh, dividing, dividing 450 by what? Well, what was the well, why should be 150 right yeah so what i did was i took 455 minus 5 which is 450 and divided by 3 which will give yeah. you 150 yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. um change the line that calculates x so the box is 200 pixels wise but is calculated using the number 4 in an assignment so that's easy so you can just okay. do 4 times 50 um, change the line that calculates y so the box 200 pixels using the numbers 50 and 3, the multiplication operator and the addition assignment operator. So you could do 50 times 3 plus 50. There you go. Don't worry if you totally messed the code up. You can always press the reset button to get things working again. After you answered all the above questions correctly, feel free to play with the code or some more or create your own challenges. So comparison operators. Sometimes we'll run to run true false test, then act accordingly depending on the result of that test. To this, we use comparison operations operators. So you have strict equality, which is three equal signs tells whether they are identical uh, strict non-equality yeah and this checks for type as well as value um, strict non-equality which tests if it's not equal less than greater than less than or equal to or greater than equal to are pretty self-explanatory you may see some people using regular equality and regular non-equality in their tests for equality and non-equality. These are valid operators in JavaScript, but they differ from the strict equality and strict non-equality. The former versions test whether the values are the same, but not whether the values data types are the same. The latter strict versions test the equality of both the values and their data types. The strict versions tend to result in fewer errors, so we recommend you use them. If you try entering some of these values in a console, you'll see that they all return true or false values. These Booleans we mentioned in the last article. These are very useful as they allow us to make decisions in our code, and they are used every time we want to make a choice of some kind. For example, Booleans can be used to display the correct text label on a button, depending on whether a feature is turned on or off, display a game over message if a game is over, or a victory message if the game has been won, Display the correct seasonal greeting depending on what holiday season it is. Zoom a map in or out depending on what zoom level is selected. First, or well, we'll look at how to code such logic when we look at conditional statements in a future article. For now, let's look at a quick example. Button start machine, the machine is stopped. So when you click, if the button text content says start machine, which it is here, um, 
button text content will change to stop machine and text will say the machine has started. So there we go. And then now if it says stop machine, which doesn't equal start machine, it's gonna run this code. So when I click it, it's gonna change the text to start machine and then this text will change to the machine has stopped. So stop machine, there you go. You can see the equality operator being used just inside the update button function. In this case, we are testing if two mathematical expressions had the same value. We are testing whether the text content of the button contains a certain string, but it is still the same principle at work. Did the button currently saying start machine when pressed, when it is pressed, we change the label to stop machine and update the label as appropriate. The button is currently saying stop machine. When it is pressed, we swap the display back again. Such a control that swaps between two states is generally referred to as a toggle. It toggles between one state and another, light on, light off, etc. Summary. In this article, we have covered the fundamental information you need to know about numbers in JavaScript. For now, you'll see numbers used again and again all the way through your JavaScript learning, so it's a good idea to get this out of the way now. If you are one of those people who doesn't enjoy math, you can take comfort in the fact that this chapter was pretty short. In the next article, we'll explore how text and JavaScript allow us to manipulate it. So we are on handling text, strings in JavaScript. Next, we'll turn our attention to strings. This is what pieces of text are called in programming. In this article, we'll look at all common things that you really ought to know about strings when learning JavaScript, such as creating strings, escaping quotes and strings, and joining strings together. The power of words. Words are very important to humans. They're a large part of how we communicate since the web is largely text-based medium designed to allow humans to communicate and share information. It is useful for us to have control over the words that appear on it. HTML provides structure and meaning to our text. CSS allows us to precisely style it and JavaScript contains a number of features for manipulating strings, creating custom welcome messages and prompts, showing the right text labels when needed, or sorting items into the desired order and much more. Pretty much all the programs we've shown you so far in the course have involved some string manipulation. The basics. Strings are dealt with similar to numbers at first glance, but when you dig deeper, you'll start to notice some notable differences. Let's start by doing entering some basic lines into a console to familiarize ourselves. You provided one below. Um, this is the same thing on everyone. Uh, creating a string. You start, enter the following lines. Can't spell. Uh, bar string equals this, and then call the string, and there we go. Just like we did with numbers, we are declaring a variable, initializing it with a string value, then returning the value. The only difference here is that when writing a string, you need to surround it with quotes. If you don't do this or miss one of the quotes, you'll get an error. Try entering the following lines. We all know these are bad. Unexpected identifier. Invalid token. And unexpected identifier. So this one doesn't have quotes at all. This one is missing a quote at the end and this one is missing a quote at the beginning. These lines don't work because any text without quotes around it is assumed to be a variable name, property name, a reserved word, or similar. If the browser can't find it, then an error is raised. If the browser can see where a string starts but can't find the end of the string, as indicated by the second quote, it complains with an error uh, with unterminated string literal. If your program is raising such errors and go back, check all your strings to make sure you have no missing quote marks. The following will work if you previously define the variable string, try it now. So we'll copy this. And then paste this in. There we go. The since string was up here, 
um, we set it bad string to equal the string we typed in up here. Um, single quotes versus double quotes. In JavaScript, you can choose single quotes or double quotes to wrap your strings in. Both will work okay. So single quotes or double quotes. There's very little difference between the two, and what you use is down to personal preference. You should choose one and stick to it, however. Differently quoted code can be confusing, especially if you use the different quotes on the same string. Following will return an error. Single quotes at the start, double quotes in the second one. The browser will think the string has not been closed because the other type of quote you are not using to contain your strings can appear in the string. For example, both of these are okay. Um, because the quotes are different within the, the string. However, you can't include the same quote mark inside the string if it's being used to contain them. The following will be an error as it confuses the browser as where the string ends. This leads us nicely into our next subject, escaping characters in a string. To fix our pro previous problem code line, we need to escape the problem quote mark. Escaping characters mean that we do something to them to make sure they are not they are recognized as text, not part of the code. In JavaScript, we do this by putting a backslash before the character. So here you are escaping the apostrophe because you put a backslash. So it doesn't read that as the end of the string. This works fine. You can escape other characters the same way with a backslash. And there are some special codes besides. See escape notation for more details. Concatenating strings. Concatenate is a fancy programming word that means join together. Joining together strings in JavaScript uses a plus operator, same one we use to add numbers together, but the, in this context, it does something different. Let's try the example in this console. So let's copy this. And then call joined. There you go. So it takes hello and then how are you and you add them together for hello, how are you? The result is a variable called joined. Um, in the last instance, we just joined two strings together, but you can do this as many, you can do as many as you like, as long as you include a plus between each one. Try this. Copy, paste, and you should see a bunch of hellos. There we go. Uh, you can also use a mix of variables and actual strings. So try this. So it should say, hello, I'm fine. How are you? Uh, note, when you enter an actual string in your code enclosed in single or double quotes, it is called a string literal. Let's have a look at concatenation being used in action. Here's an example from earlier in the course. So here's the press me button. What is your name? Hello, name, nice to see you. Here we are using the window prompt function in line four, which asks the user to answer a question via pop-up dialog box, then stores the text they enter inside a given variable, in this case, name. When we then use a window alert function in line five to display another pop-up, containing a string we've assembled from two string literals in the name variable via concatenation. So what happens when we try to add or concatenate a string in a number? Let's try it in our console. So front plus 242, it turns 242 into a string and adds them together. You might expect this to throw an error, but it works just fine. Trying to represent a string as a number doesn't really make sense, but rep representing a number as a string does. So the browser rather cleverly converts the number to a string and concatenates the two strings together. You can do this with two numbers. You can force a number to become a string by wrapping it in quote marks. Try the following. Uh, we're using the type of operator to check whether the variable is a number or a string. So this will, you'll probably get back 1967 and string. Um, yeah, well. My date should be 1967. Yep. If you have a numeric variable that you want to convert to a string but not change otherwise, or a string variable that you want to convert to a number but not change otherwise, you can use the following two constructs. 
the number object will convert anything passed into it into a number if it can. Try the following. So let's go back to the top. He set in. So this will take my num, which is the string. No, wait, my num will equal number my string. So number will take my string, which is one, two, three, as an argument, and turn it into a number. So there you go, number. On the other hand, every every number has a method called to string that will convert it to an equivalent string. So we'll try this. And then you should get string. There we go. These constructs can be really useful in some situations. For example, if a user enters a number into a text or a form text field, it will be a string. However, if you want to add this number to something, you'll need, need it to be a number. So you could pass it through number to handle this. We did exactly this in our number guessing game. Conclusion. So that, that's the very basics of strings covered in JavaScript. In the next article, we'll build on this. Looking at some of the built-in methods available to strings in JavaScript and how we can use them to manipulate our strings into just the form we want. So the next one is useful string methods. DK, I'm going to take a quick break because uh, okay. I've been talking so much like my throat's getting scratchy. <laughs> I need to grab me a drink, so I'll be back in a few minutes. What are you saying, John? I said, yeah, I did. Dang, was here, bro. Uh, you need to read. Yeah, I know, man. It's a lot of reading. <laughs> it's cool, though. It's four o'clock. Oh. Is it four o'clock? <laughs> is it is it four AM where you are, DK? Yeah. Man, that's early. <laughs> um you go ahead and share my screen. Okay. Yeah. Okay, useful string methods. Now that we've looked at the very basics of strings, let's move up a gear and start thinking about what useful operations we can do on strings with methods, such as finding the length of a string, joining and splitting strings, or substituting one character in a string for another and more. Strings as objects. We've said it before and we'll say it again, everything is an object in JavaScript. When you create a string, for example, by using this, our string, this is my string, your variable becomes a string object instance, and as a result has a large number of properties and methods available to it. You can see this if you go to the string object type page and look down the list on the side of the page. Now before your brain starts melting, don't worry. You really don't need to know about most of these early on in your learning journey, but there are a few that you'll potentially use quite often that we'll look at here. Let's enter some examples into a fresh console. We provided one below, so you can blah, blah, blah. Find the length of a string. This is easy. You simply use the length property, try entering the following lines. So copy paste. This will tell us how many letters are in Mozilla because the browser type dot length. There we go, seven. This should return the seven because Mozilla is seven characters long. This is useful for many reasons. For example, you might want to find the lengths of a series of names so you can display them in order of length or let a user know that a username that they have entered into a form field is too long if it is over a certain length. Retrieving a specific string character. On a related note, you can return any character inside a string by using square bracket notation. This means that you include square brackets on the end of your variable name. Inside the square brackets, you include the number of the character you want to return. So for example, to retrieve the first letter, you would do this. And as you can see, it gives you M. It's kind of hard to see. Make it bigger. 
Uh, computers count from zero, not one. To retrieve the last character of any string, you use the following line, combining this technique with the link property we looked at. So paste this, and it gives you the last letter. Because length is seven, but the index is six for A. Um, the length of Mozilla is seven, but because the count starts at zero, the character is in position six, hence us needing length minus one. You could use this, for example, to find the first letter of a series of strings and order them alphabetically. Sometimes you'll want to find if a smaller string is present inside a larger one. We generally say if a substring is present inside a string. This can be done using the index of method, which takes a single parameter, the substring you want to search for. Try this. We'll paste this in here. And it returns a two, which is the index where this starts at. So yeah, zero, one, two. This gives us a result of two because the substring Z-I-L-L-A starts at position two, zero, one, two. So three characters in inside Mozilla. Such code can be used to filter strings. For example, we may have a list of web addresses and, and only want to point, print out the ones that contain Mozilla. This can be done in another way which is possibly even more effective. Try this. So this returns negative one because this is not part of Mozilla. This should give you a result of negative one. This is returned when the substring, in this case vanilla, is not found in the main string. You could use this to find all instances of strings that don't contain the substring Mozilla or do if you use the, notate, the negation operator, as shown below, you could do something like this. So, if browser type index of Mozilla does not equal negative one, do stuff with a string. When you know where substring starts inside a string, and you know at which character you want to end it, Slice can be used to extract it. Try the following. So this will slice off, starting at index zero, three characters, which will return MOZ, MOZ. This returns MOZ. The first parameter is the character position to start extracting it, and the second parameter is the character position after the last one to be extracted. So the slice happens, oh, I guess I read that wrong. So this will be the character index after you want it to be sliced. So three is actually I, and it'll slice off everything before I since it starts at zero. Um, so the slice happens from the first position up to, but not including the last position. In this example, since the starting index is zero, the second parameter is equal to the length of the string being returned. Also, if you know that you want to extract all the remaining characters in a string after a certain character, you don't have to include the second parameter. Instead, you only need to include the character position from where you want to extract the remaining characters in a string. Let's try this. So this should start at index two, which is Z. So Z I L O A should be extracted. Yep. Clear. Um, this returns Zilla. This is because the character position two is the letter Z, and because you didn't want to include a second parameter, the substring that was returned was all of the remaining characters in the string. The second parameter slice is optional. If you don't include it, the slice ends at the end of the string. There are other options too. Study the slice page to see what else you can find out. Changing case. The string methods to lowercase and to uppercase take a string and convert all the characters to lower or uppercase respectively. This can be useful, for example, if you want to normalize all user inner data before storing it in a database. Let's try enter the following lines and see what happens. So we'll enter this first, and then we'll do to uppercase. Oh, that was to lowercase. So everything is lowercase now. And then to uppercase, everything should be caps. Yep. Updating parts of a string. 
You can replace one stroke substring inside a string with another substring using the replace method. This works very simply at a basic level, although there are some advanced things you can do with it that we won't go into yet. It takes two parameters, the string you want to replace and the string you want to replace it with. Try this example. Um, so this is calling back to the browser type variable. So instead of Mozilla, it now says vanilla because you replace the M-O-Z in it with V-A-N. Note that to actually get the updated value reflected in a browser type variable in a real program, you'd have to set the variable value to be the result of the operation. It doesn't just update the substring value automatically. So you'd actually have to write this browser type equals browser type dot replace mozvan. So if you just called browser type, would it still say Mozilla? Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Okay, now it changed. So you have to like reset it to the variable name. Um, active learning examples. In this section will get you to try your hand at writing some string manipulation code. In each exercise below, we have an array of strings and a loop that processes each value in the array and displays it in a bulleted list. You don't need to understand arrays or loops right now. These will be explained in future articles. All you need to do in each case is write the code that will output the strings in the format we want them in. Each example comes with a reset button so you can use to reset the code if you make a mistake or you can't get it working again. And a show solution button you can press to see the potential answer if you really get stuck. Filtering greeting message. In this first exercise, we'll start you off simple. We have an array of greeting card messages but we want to sort them to list just the Christmas messages. We want you to fill in a conditional test inside the if structure to test each string and only print out, print it in the list if it's a Christmas message. So, first think about how you can test whether the message in each case is a Christmas message, what string present is, is present in all those messages. And what method could you use to test? Um, so they all say Christmas in them, right? So what do we use for that? We use the index of. So var input cities i. Wait, that's not the right one. Here it is. If greetings I dot what was the method called again? Index of index of Christmas. Does not equal negative one. Does that work? Doesn't look like that works. Oh, that's what I did. No, it's okay. I put the parentheses in the wrong place. There we go. So yeah, that worked. Wait, what was like? I think I had a question because I'm not. Really I know you were doing. I read the question, so you understand what they wanted to say. So, so what? So what happens is when you use index of on a string, if it doesn't contain what's in the the per, the parameter or the argument, if it doesn't contain this, it returns negative one. So if it does contain this, it won't be negative one. So that's why I put that in there. Okay. So if index of Christmas, if it equals negative one, that means it's not in that string and it won't, uh, this won't be true. So it won't run this if statement. Okay. 
Yeah, okay, I think I got that. Okay, fixing capitalization. In this exercise, we have the names of cities in the United Kingdom, but capitalization is all messed up. We want you to change them so that they are all lowercase, except for the capital first letter. A good way to do this is convert the whole string contained in the input variable to lowercase and store it in a new variable. Grab the first letter of the string in this new variable and store it in another variable. Use this latest variable as a substring. Replace the first letter of the lowercase string with the first letter of the lowercase string, change the uppercase. Store the results of this replace procedure in a new variable. Change the value of the result variable to equal the final result, not the input. So, so it's already looping through the array. So, convert the whole string contained in the input variable to lowercase. So, and store it in a new variable. So, bar lower equals input dot to lowercase. Is that the right capitalization on that? Uh, yeah. Okay. Grab the first letter of the string in this new variable and store it in another variable. So bar letter will equal lower zero. Using this latest variable as a substring, replace the first letter of the lowercase string with the first letter of the lowercase string change to uppercase. Store the result of this replace procedure in a new variable. So, wait, I'm in the wrong spot. Um, so they need a new variable. So new, We'll just call it cap. Using this as a substring. So you want to replace the lower, lower dot replace. Uh, what was the parameters here? Moz and band. So you would take It's the wrong one. Lower dot replace. Letter. All right. to letter to uppercase. Is that what you have to do? I'm trying to go to the order. Okay, first we're going to be converting uh, input to a lowercase. Mm-hmm. That, that, that'll be, uh, that's, that, that's safe to result. Save to result. Save to result? As in, no, you are saving the, like the um, the input to lowercase. You are saving it to a new variable. Yeah, I did right here. Lower input to lowercase to new variable lower. Okay. Oh, wow. Hey guys, I'm back. Input is already there. Hey Adam. Input is already defined. So I was going to convert it to lowercase from. Inside the bar result, grab the first element of the thing, the new variable, and store it in the new variable. Oh, shoot, I should have done that yesterday. 
Let's replace. Yeah, I don't know if I'm using it right though here. Use the latest variable of the variable sub variable as sub trim. Use the latest variable of the point. Replace the point letter of the lower case variable. The point letter of the lower case. Use the latest variable as sub trim. Replace the first letter of the lower case, lower case trim. It's the first letter of the lower case to change to upper case. Defined. So uh, what are you doing? Trying to do this problem here, man. What is that you doing? Uh, messing with capitalization of strings. Well, I am streaming too. <laughs> you said capitalization of strings. Mm -hmm. Have we done that on free code count? Mm, not sure if we done or not. Yeah, one of the basic algorithms goes through that, but probably not. At all. So I'm not, you're here. Oh, dude, get back. give Pat a break, please. Would you give Pat a break and like, would you read the next few articles? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Pat. You're the best, dude. You and Pat, you guys are amazing, bro. Are yeah, both. no worries, man. Seriously. Um, so yeah, man, and DK. <laughs> All right, so yeah, dude. Um, so the next few ones, just please, if you would. Yeah. Um, also, uh, oh yeah, so you finally met Adam. I mean, you finally met Pat. <laughs> I was I was telling him uh, the other day, Pat, about how you and um how I always try to get you to meet party, but freaking uh every time like you were here, or a party wasn't here, and every time party was here, you wasn't here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll stop sharing the screen. All right. Uh, where I should probably figure out where we're actually at. Um, I'm gonna move my, my mic though, because I'm. I'm a, 
Better still, I got a bunch going on here. Here, I'll paste the code or the address into the. Are you still Are you still recording, oh, Pat? Thank you. Yeah, I'm still recording. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Oh, so you guys both have uh, access to the YouTube, so you guys can upload those in the format that, like, when you upload it, don't just let it upload Zoom zero, Zoom one, Zoom two. Uh, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show. You, I'm gonna paste this in here right quick. The way that you should upload it. I had I had texted this to you guys earlier. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm gonna text this to you guys now. But like this is like excuse that, <laughs> excuse that first semicolon. You know, right there before Adam that has nothing to do with the text. You guys probably know that. Don't mute myself. Okay. If you would please do it in that format, It'd be like day. Like like two nineteen, nineteen or whatever whatever the day is two thirteen nineteen. Right. Then JavaScript because we're in the JavaScript learning group. Maybe like JavaScript learning group. And uh, and then like a uh, Zoom video. Uh, and then like you know they have Zoom zero, Zoom one, Zoom two. Like put it like that and just upload them all. And I'll go through them all. And I'll just that way you don't have to go through them and be like oh we gotta keep this fifteen minute one. Just no, no, just whatever you guys got just. Just so, how do I upload it to your channel, John? Huh? How do uh, I upload it to your channel? YouTube. Are you, am I looking at your screen right now? No, you're looking at Adam's, but I'm on YouTube if you just want to tell All me. Right. So, Adam, go to, your, go to YouTube right quick because you guys should both have permission right now. So, I know you guys are going to see what I watch all the time. You know. A cat view is going to pop up, Adam. It's all right. I see what Jonathan watches all the time when he shares his screens. I'll show you guys. It's, I've, <laughs> I've, been, I've been stuck on. I've, I've been stuck on watching. Yeah, it's a bunch of infographics. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, where do I go? I get a bunch of infographics. The infographic show, Joe Rogan. Yeah. <laughs> I stopped watching this dude. I'm over this guy. I'm tired of him. It's like I'm kind of jealous of him. Like, but it's like I'm. That, you know, that's probably why I don't. Like him. But maybe, I don't I've been watching, like, but I don't get any value out of them. Like, he just bitches. You know, it's just, I don't, maybe it's because I don't understand him, you know? I just, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to focus on me not, like, saying I don't like him. Because I said that the other day, one time. I've said that one time before. It's like, I don't like him. But well, that's not really it, dude. It's like, I don't, I don't know the dude, bro. I don't know him. And it's like, I, can't, I, I would, I, I don't, it's, he's not, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't get no juice. So, what do we go to? Yeah, where we go? You know, I don't know. But oh, um, where are we at? Uh, maybe it's because I don't watch it. I, I don't know. Man. I just I don't. Let me get off of that. What's it called? So go to your uh, yeah. Go to the, right there where you clip. Where you, yeah, right there. And uh, go to my channel. No, I posted something. Yeah, make a video, bro, so we can start following. You. Go no, not not literally not right now. But go to yeah. go back to your picture. And then go back to uh, switch account. Go to add account. Oh, why don't you why don't, why don't you guys see it? Oh, check your email. Go check your email. See if you got a YouTube message. Your YouTube. Prawn. I added you guys as I added everybody that I added as manager. So there's like lesser man, there's like project manager, manager, like owner. Okay, I see. I got enough. Did you? Okay. Nice. Damn, Jaden, take your time, please. Okay. Uh that was today, wasn't it? Damn it, I forgot. Hey, so if you guys got it, uh maybe check just type up oh, there. Uh I don't know. I don't know. Oh. Invited you to manage W3 Develops. Probably. Oh, sweet. Yeah, dude. Cool. So, Jonathan Jackson. Yeah, that's me. Hey, guys. All right. So, uh, yeah. And then you should be able to upload videos. Is it just do it in that kind of form? Go text the. I got to go talk to the HTML guys right quick so I can tell them the same thing. Okay. Yeah, I think I got it from there. All right, yeah. guys. Thanks, man. I'll, talk, I'll be right back. All right. Cool. Deal with it later. Come on, man. 
break on me. Yeah, leave. Okay. So I'm assuming the fixing capitalization. Yeah, that's what we're working on. So in this exercise, we have names of cities, United Kingdom, but the capitalization is all messed up. Of course it is. We want you to change them so that they're all lowercase, except for a capital first letter. Good way to do this is convert the whole stream containing the input variable to lowercase and store it in a new variable. Okay. Grab the first letter of the stream with a new variable and store it to another stream. Okay. Cool. Using this latest variable as a substring, replace the first letter. Okay, so make two variables and then the second one, which is the first letter, replace the first it of the input variable. The first character is first index or whatever. Using the latest variable substring, replace the first letter of the first letter of the string. Or letter of the case, string of the case, store the result, and replace this procedure into another new variable. Okay, cool. So three variables so far. Change result, value result, variable to equal the final result and not the input. Well, that's not confusing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's an easier way to do that the way they're trying to explain it. <laughs> so they're just basically trying to make you like, oh, I see why. Because the variable will show each change, right? Like, so it'll show as opposed to you do like changing all that stuff. It'll you're literally going step by step to prove, like, like show your work, basically. Oh, okay. I think I figured okay. it out just now. <laughs> I think is like I'd like to assume that's why they're doing it, but all right. So the first convert the whole thing into sort of new variable. So um, okay. So, um, yeah. I was missing parentheses on my uh, method call. That was all that was wrong with my code. <laughs> oh, that's it. Yeah, I got I got it worked out. Um, I mean, if you want to work through it, that's cool. I'm gonna try to finish one. All right, so now it's lowercase. Is there is this the can I console log in here? I assume. I feel like this is gonna break it. Uh, I don't think it's considered a console because. I didn't think so. Yeah, they actually have like a pin child down there in the code and all that. So that's what I thought. Okay, so I'm just kind of cool. I'll look at it. All right, so everything's lowercase, and then grab the first letter of the string of the new. Bar. Another variable. Grab the first letter stream. Use the substring and replace the first letter of the lowercase. Change the first letter of the string to uppercase. When I do that, wait, hold on. When I just do that here, it would seem more logical to uppercase it here. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> you could. <laughs> oh. I'd, I just did it the way they asked for. I created a new variable called capitalize and. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. No, I'll, I'll go with it. I'll go with it. Hold on. I think they want you to re to use a replace um, on your lowercase input var. Oh, okay. And then return the new variable. Oh, okay. So, so. I hate doing. Yeah, capitalize word. Uh, so that's. Is lower is replace a string? I guess it is a string. String method. Yeah. So I'm doing lowercase. Input. Dot replace. Is 
first parameter is what it's actually going to be, or is the first parameter? Yeah, the first parameter is what's taken, being taken out, and then the second parameter is what's being put in. Uh, okay, okay. So if I just first letter, get the lowercase, then I guess first letter that to uppercase. Yep, that's what I did. Cool. Cool. Then I'm done here. You got a camel case, your uh, uppercase. Oh, thank you. Of course. See, this is what you run into, and you don't know why it's not working. That's yeah. Not working. <laughs> yeah, actually, I had to con I had to copy it over into the console and then see where my error was at in order <laughs> to find it, and then I found it. Um, but then you got to change the result. Oh, okay. So then result becomes cap word then? Yeah. yeah. I've never then used this many variables. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, it's a lot of variables. <laughs> But you have you have another result down there at the bottom you probably need to take out. Oh, so you just this uh, last value from like the old thing. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. Yes, yes. Uh, nothing is showing. You. Hope you didn't cancel out anything from the loop. There is. What did I do? Just reset, reset the code and start again. First letter. Copy this. <laughs> okay, that's it. After the comment here. Good. So, okay. The first thing you're supposed to do is uh, convert the O, like the, the input to lowercase. Right. So I set it to lowercase. After you convert input to lowercase, then you pick uh, the first value you, after you convert to lock and, and store it to a variable, a new variable. Then after that, you, you pick the first value from the right. lower case, um, 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 from the oh. lower uh, variable input. That and right. another variable. Then okay. create another another last variable which um, uses the lower case to, the lower case for the input you created. Then you now use the replace method to um, replace the first um, letter of the lower case with the upper case, with, the, uh, with, an upper, with the, an upper case for it. First letter, and then first letter to uppercase. Oh, and then. There you go. Yeah. Okay. You're right. So was that. Cool. 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 Dope. All right. So I guess we'll. Oof. Ugh. This is. Oof. All right. Great. Uh, <laughs> in this last exercise, the array contains a bunch of strings containing information about train stations north of England. We don't need to know about that. The strings are data items that contain three-letter station codes followed by some machine readable data, followed by a semicolon, followed by a human readable station example. For example, man, blah, 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 semicolon, Manchester, Piccadilly. We want to extract the station code and name and put them together in a string with the following structure, man, colon, Manchester, Piccadilly. Of course, you recommend this. Uh, we recommend doing something like this. Extract the three-letter station code and store it to a, a new variable. Uh, find the character index uh, number of the semicolon. Extract the human readable data or human readable station name using the semicolon character index as a reference point and store it in a new variable. Concatenate two new variables and the string a string literal to make them the final string. Change the value results. Uh, oh, okay, so I was supposed to actually change it in there. Okay, change the value result to equal the final string, not the input. Okay, so next time I'll just replace result. Cool. All right, so the first one is 
Um, so my first thought would be to pull life. Uh, so bar station abbreviation. Uh, so station I, so that would be input dot slice. Um, and the first variable is where it starts. And I want the first three. So I guess I realize I can just use this as a placeholder. Nope, I failed. The three? No. Okay, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm stupid. You're actually counting, it's not the index, it's how many characters that you want to cut from. I'm, I shouldn't know. Starting no, point. It's it's the index not inclusive. So right. yeah, three is the fourth uh, character, but it's not inclusive. So gotcha. whoever coded slice into JavaScript should be bopped on the head. <laughs> 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 it would make more sense if it was characters. <laughs> <laughs> you just you just deal with it again. Like uh, yeah yeah, you just deal with it. Cool. <laughs> All right. Uh, so find the character index number in the semicolon. So I guess that would be. Had to be one of the methods they taught up top. Because you can, uh, yeah, I guess I should see what they actually said up here. Because you can use, I guess you can use index out, right? Yeah, because that'll give you a number of the index. Return, yeah. OK. So I guess I don't actually have to store it in a variable. I just didn't know, didn't know where it is. Oh, because I'm going to use it later. OK. So I can go here. I can go input.index of. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, I see. Okay, because we're gonna. Store it in as a reference point. Extracting the neural station and using semicolon character after the index number. I wonder if I can read it. So I guess slice again, right? Unless you guys are using something else. No, it's yeah, slice, and I think you use because if you don't put the second parameter in, it'll just slice it all the way to the end of the string. Right, right, right. So, oh, okay, I see what you mean. Okay, so, uh, all right. So then, name equals input dot slice, and so there will only be one parameter here, and that will be. Input index of single quotes. Station name. Dope. I'm sure there's a better way. <laughs> yeah, what I did was I, I stored the index of uh, oh, a semicolon in a variable, and then I put the variable in there plus one. Yeah, OK, so kind of the same thing. All right. Yeah, same thing, just with a variable, another variable. That's probably cleaner anyway. Uh, have a Index. That's cool. Okay. And then we'll concat 
need to into a new variable. I'm an idiot. Cool. Cool. Didn't do that. Oh, no. I, you want to help? I actually did. Yeah, Colin. <laughs> that would help. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Conclusion. You can't escape the fact that being able to handle words and sentences as programming is very important, particularly in JavaScript, as websites are all about communicating this with people or communicating with people. In this article, it's giving you basics you need to know about manipulating strings for now. This should serve you well as you go into more complex topics in the future. Next, we're going to look at the last major type of data and focus in on the short term. Arrays. Yay. Yeah, like going through this, I was like, oh man, this is just like basic review. <laughs> but, but yet I still learned something like that replace right. method. I've never used that. <laughs> I don't think, like I've used it for like regex stuff, for like replace, but I had a fight with like my last boss about, cause he hated regex. And I hate like, regex. I, I, yeah, I, I hate it too, but like in the sense of like for, if for checking things, it helped out in the scenario. So like I had a fight to keep that code in there. <laughs> I went to but, a, I went to a meetup, a local meetup here with uh, some developers and they were like, oh, regex is easy. And I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Like it's easy when it's like when you're focused in on one scenario mm -hmm. and like trying to like mess around with things. But then also, yeah, you, I feel like it's two or three hours wasted of my time. <laughs> I could have been doing a lot more productive on a bunch of other stuff. Awesome. Yeah, let's um, let's go through this array section and then um, like the assessment. We could do the assessment on our own time. Yeah. And yeah. No worries. And, uh, you know, by tomorrow, we should all have our assessment done. Cool. I'm done with that. Cool. Cool. All right. And in the final article of this module, we'll look at arrays, a neat way of storing lists of data items under a single variable name. Here, we look at why this is useful. Then we explore how to create an array, retrieve, add, and remove items stored in that array, and more besides. I think you all know the prerequisites. I, at this point, I think we all understand at least how to manipulate understanding arrays and, uh, okay. So we're, our objective is to understand what arrays are and how to manipulate them in JavaScript. All right, what's an array? An array is generally described as a list-like object, as list-like objects. Um, they're basically single objects that contain multiple values stored in a list. Array objects can be stored in variables and dealt in much the same way as uh, any other type of value. The difference being that we can access each value inside the list individually. And uh, super useful and, and efficient things with the list, like loop through it, do the same thing on every value. Uh, maybe we've got a series of products of items that are price, uh, that are price stored in an array. And we wanna loop through them all and print out on an invoice, while totaling all the prices together and printing out the total price at the bottom. If we didn't have arrays, we just have to sort every item in a separate variable, then call the code uh, that does the printing and adds uh, and adding separately for each item. This would be much longer to write out and less efficient and more error prone. If we had 10 items to add to the invoice, it would be bad enough. 
support, about 100 items or 1,000. Uh, we'll return to this example later in the article. As in previous articles, uh, let's learn about the real basis of arrays by entering some examples in the JavaScript console. Uh, we're providing one below. Cool. So console here, you can set the test window, or use the browser to develop the console if you prefer. Cool. Does this actually work? No. I'm not cool. Is it because I'm on Brave Browser? It's because I'm on Brave Browser. All right, uh, arrays are constructed in square brackets, which mean a list of items uh, separated by commas. Let's say we want to store a shopping list in an array. We do something like the following. Enter each item, uh, and follow the notes in your console. Uh, I I yeah, can... I did a, when I was screen sharing, I did a like split screen with my console on the right and, uh, I'm just going to use the develop console. I don't want to do All right, cool. Now I'll just do this and we'll do this. Cool. Okay. Uh, cool, cool, cool. So I'm going to add there. Are All you right. window sharing or uh, screen sharing? Because I only, see, yeah, I only see your window. Oh, am I window sharing? I'm sorry. Yeah. Wah, wah. Let's see. Why? Oh, the whole desktop would help, right? Is that better? You see yeah, it? I can see it now. Okay, cool. Sorry. Uh, bar shopping equals. Let's do this thing. Uh, red. I would just copy paste, Adam. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's typing it all out. <laughs> Good point. Why am I doing this? What would be. Why am I why am I resorting to that? Yeah, thank you. Because typing in the console isn't fun sometimes. <laughs> it's sometimes not, no. Sometimes not particularly. I'm just going to convert that to single quotes. Cool. Okay. Uh yeah, cool. Shopping. W I double did. Shopping. All right. Uh, in the case of uh, each item in the array, uh, in the array is a string, but bear in mind you can also store them in an array. Uh, in any item in an array, string, number, object, another variable, even another array. You can mix and match types, and they don't have to be the same, uh, be numbers, strings, etc. to try these. Hold on one second. Uh, oh, shoot. Just give me one second. Sorry, my daughter's coming. No worries.
All right. Sorry, guys. Two year olds. Cool. Sorry. Right. Uh, <laughs> all right. So uh, I guess I'll create an array. Cool. All right. Bar. All right. Stop. One. True. Truths. True. I did it. Uh, all right, accessing and modifying arrays. You can access individual items in the array using the bracket notation in the same way that you can access letters in the string. Uh, Following into your console. Right. Cool. You can also modify an item in an array by simply giving an array item to a new value. Try this. Cool. You said it before, just a reminder, computer start from zero. Yeah, it's probably a good idea to remember that. Uh, note that an array inside an array is called a multi-dimensional array. You can access an item inside an array that is itself inside of another array by chaining two sets of square brackets together. For example, to access one of the items inside the array, uh, that is the third item inside the random array. Uh, we're seeing the previous section. Oh, I see in there. Okay, do random two two. Multi-dimensional arrays were like the like I'm starting to get it now, but like that was the. That's a very I have a very basic understanding of it. I don't think I can start like messing around with stuff. I think I did a Code Wars one where you had to do like you had to turn turn the array like ninety degrees, and that never made sense to me. What? Yeah, so it's like so you make so it would you'd have to figure out how big the array is, right? So if it was three, let's say it's it's three sub like sub arrays, and each of them like has like the first sub array is zero one zero it would have to like go to the right the end of the second one but like you had to like you basically had to figure like you had to tell javascript how big the array is and then basically like move it all at the same or slowly move it all at the same time it didn't make sense and i still can't do it so i'm that, not gonna do it that sounds confusing <laughs> that sounds computer sciencey that sounds way too computer sciencey cool all right try making this a more modern on the array example before moving on, have the play and see what works and what doesn't. I think it's very obvious. I'll do, I guess, random zero equals uh, shrug. I don't know how to spell shrug. Cool. I guess that's how you spell shrug now. Uh, cool. Uh, finally, the length of array. You can find the length of array, how many items are in, it, in the exact same way that you find out the length of characters in a string by using the length property. Do that, cool, do length, understandable, term seven. This has other issues or uses, but it's most commonly used to tell a loop. Steve going into this loop through all the items in an array. So for that, sequence, right, one, two, three. Undefined at the end. Cool. You'll learn about loops properly in a future article. But briefly, the code is saying start looping at the number zero in the array. Start stop looping at the when the item equals the length of the array. This will work for an array of any length, but in the case it will stop looping at item seven. This is good as the last item, which we want to loop over to cover is six. Hmm? Oh, okay, I see what you're for each item printed out onto the browser console with the console.log method. Some useful array methods. In this section, we'll look at some rather useful array related methods that allow us to split strings into an array, uh, into array items, and vice versa, and add new items into the array. Often you'll be presented with some raw data, or sorry, converting strings to new items. Often you'll be presented with some raw data contained in a big long string, and you might want to separate the useful items out into a more useful form and then uh, do things with them, like display them on a data table. Who uses a data? Okay. To do this, we can use split method. Uh, in the simplest form, it just takes a single parameter 
the character you want to separate the string at and returns the substrings uh, between the separator as, as items in an array. Okay, this is technically a string method, not an array method, but we put in arrays as it goes well here. Good point. Uh, to do this, let's see how it works. Let's, let's copy that. Let's clear this. Oh, I'm just gonna clear that. Cool, it's my data. Bar my array. My array. Cool. And then we'll do so let's put it into each comma. Finally, try finding the length of the new array and retrieve some of the items. Dope. That's six. Cool. There we go. My control delete. Cool. Oh, dope, it actually works. Cool. Nope, that doesn't work there. Doesn't know. I should know better, I'm not in VS code. Cool. Cool, the last item in the index. First, second, last. Sweet, you can now Oh, you can always go the opposite way with the join method and try the following. Bar my new string makes it my array dot join. My new string returns it back to its original. Cool. Another way of converting array to strings is to use the two string method. It's two five string. o'clock. Oh no, it's five o'clock. Uh, two string is arguably simpler than join as it doesn't take a parameter. Uh, but more limiting with join, you can specify different separators. Try running step four with a different character other than a comma. Oh, I see. Cool. Cool. I wonder. So two string always gives you commas in between them. That's what I was gonna, yeah. So join, you can do this, right? So you can use, uh, you can use anything, and it will. You can use any character, any not like so comma, period, space, and then I guess yeah, I guess two string. You can't use anything in here. Let's do the same. Yeah, so no matter what in that parameter or whatever you add as a parameter, it's just going to return. Yeah, no that doesn't seem very helpful uh, to use two string then. Um, no, not so much, especially when you're like, yeah, separating it and putting it back together. And I doubt you're going to get like, I doubt you're going to do something with it and then return it back to the state where it's just commas in between as a, yeah. as a whole, one whole string. Huh. I didn't even know that two string. Well, I guess I should. No, I didn't know two string was a thing. Yeah, I knew two um, string was a thing. Like if you put a number in there, it'd turn it to a string. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't know you could use it on arrays. Like if you if if you set a variable to equal a number oh. and then two string, it'll turn that into an actual string. <laughs> yeah, like if you set like a variable. Oh, equal, I see. What you, okay. To equal one and then change the variable to string. Oh, I see. Okay, because it leaves it. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. I see. Right. Just like you parse int or, you know. Right. Okay. On the opposite for a number or number value. Cool. All right. Adding and removing array items. We've not yet covered adding and removing array items. Let's look at this now. We'll use my array. Uh, we end up with the last section. If you've not already followed that section, great, yeah, right, 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 yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's there. Cool. Uh, first of all, to add and move an item, at the end of the array, you can use you can use push and pop respectively. Let's use push first. Okay. Add a card. Oops, like that. 
Oops. Right. Okay. Oops. Console. So actually go to the top. Cool. Okay. It's nine items. Cool. The new length of the array is returned when the method call completes. If you want to store the new array length into a variable, you could do something like this. So actually put it in a variable. So return an array. Cool. Okay. Makes sense. I need that for later. Yeah, that's like uh, one of those things that like always like slips my mind about JavaScript, like, <laughs> like a push method. It's like, oh, I'm using push to, you know, change this array, but like, oh yeah, there's another thing that it does, like return how long the array is. Right. And if you needed to update that into another function or needed to uh, keep account of it, yeah, that would make sense to, to store it in a variable. Probably should actually do start doing things with arrays like that. Yeah, instead of like always doing dot length. Um, <laughs> and just taking it from there. Yeah. <laughs> just being lazy. Cool. All right. So removing the last item from the array is as simple as using uh, running the pop method on it. So there you go. And so it actually, the item that was removed is returned when the call method completes. So you can do the same thing. You can set a variable so item to the pop array. You can, it will now be, I guess, eight because I did it twice. And then removed item. That makes sense. Yeah, I guess you would need it to store it if you need you're doing something with it. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, sweet. So unshift and shift work exactly the same way as push and pop respectively, except that they work on the beginning of the array and not the end. So this would add, add it to the front. Cool. cool, that's correct, right there. And then we can set a variable because that probably does the same thing as pop. My array is eight and remove the item is the one we just added to Edinburgh. Cool. Sweet. All right, active learning, print those products. Let's return to the example we described earlier, printing out product names and prices on an invoice and totaling the prices and printing them at the bottom. Uh, in the editable example below, oh, this is the actual like example they have to do now. Yeah. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Does it look like this thing? No, nope. come on. Dope. All right. Uh, da, 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 da. In the editable example below, there are comments containing numbers. Each uh, one of these marks a place where you have to add something in the code. And they are as follows: the line below, uh, below the comment number one, or number one comment, uh, are the numbers of strings, each one containing a product name and price separated by a colon. We'd like you to turn this into an array and store it in the variable called products. On the same line as number two comment uh, is the beginning of the loop. For this, it is current, the line we currently have is i is less than or equal to zero, which is a conditional test that causes the for loop to only run once. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, because it is saying stop when i is no longer less than or equal to zero, and i starts at zero. So we'd like you to replace this with a conditional test that stops the loop when i is no longer less than the process of the array length. Makes sense. Just below line number three, we can comment, uh, or we can, yeah, we can comment what you write. Uh, we want you to write a line of code that splits the current array uh, name price into two separate items, one containing just the name and one containing just the price. If you're not sure how to do this, consult the useful string methods article for some help, or even better, look. Uh, at the converting between strings and arrays section of this article. Wait, what? Oh, so we're just splitting this into two separate arrays then. So whatever's here will go, and whatever is there will go to another array. Okay. 
I'll have to remember how to do that. I'm sure I remember. As a part of the line of code above, above the line of code, you'll also want to convert the price from a string to a number. If you can't remember how to do this, check the first strings article. Uh, there's a variable called total that is created and given the value of zero at the top of the code inside the loop below number four. We want you to add a line that adds the current price to the total in each iteration of the loop so that the end of the code, at the end of the code, the correct total is printed into the invoice. You might need an assignment operator to do this. Also makes sense. We want you to change the line just below number five so that the item text variable is equal to the current item name, current or dash current item price. For examples, shoes dash 23.99. In each case, uh, so the correct information for each item is printed on the invoice. This is just simple string contamination, which you will be familiar, which should be familiar to you. Cool. That doesn't sound like a lot. Doesn't sound right. like a lot. I know. I should actually read what is it? Okay, so let's start with number one. Number one comments, uh, under the number one comment are a number of strings, each one containing a product number and the price separated by colon. Would you like to turn this into an array and store it in the value of products? But they're all... I guess what's weird is they're all, they're not stored to anything, they're just literally just strings. Yeah, I just put them in an array. That's all I did. Okay. I'm literally like just a literal array, right? Like, yeah. Okay. That's why I was, I was like, are they trying to, because it's not all one string. Okay. I'm thinking too hard is, is basically the problem. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Products equals. I'm just trying too hard. Oh, cool. Comma, 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 comma. DK, if you're there, I muted you because your phone was ringing. <laughs> okay, so it's alright, right? Yeah. Socks. Yeah, it's a little alright. Cool. 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 Yep. Now it's products. Cool. Uh, on the same, okay, so now it's the for loop, and I want to do iterate through each one, so do products, 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 dot blank. If our i is equal to zero, i is less than products dot length, i plus plus. Cool. Probably want to remove the equals in. Oh, yeah, because it doesn't matter. Because it should be, yeah, because it'll stop at that point. Right. Fair enough. Uh, all right, just below line number three, we want you to write a line of code that splits the current array item into two separate items. One containing just the name and one containing just the price. So I guess I can, if you want to try and do this. So we can do the same thing as the last example, right? Where, um, we can do two slices, or get a variable which is the length of this semicolon, and do a slice for this one, and a slice for that one. Yeah, I'm thinking that. I just don't know, do they want to, I mean, it doesn't make sense to save them into a variable in the loop. Um, are we gonna I mean, push I guess them? It's gonna, yeah, well, no, no, I guess it, that's what, because it's in the end, this is what this is, right? Like, so it's this, this first item is the actual item, and then the string could be had nation with the, uh, with the dash, and then this converted into a number, well, I guess it'll be put back into a string since we're concatenating it, but in theory it's supposed to be, yeah, I don't, <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh, I just have to, to parse for me. <laughs> <laughs> Converting between strings and arrays. 
So what did we do up here? Comforting. Great array. That's what we did. Okay, so technically, if we split it, it becomes <laughs> it becomes a, uh, another array with two items. If we use the split method, which I guess is like I guess would be better than creating two variables where I do slice. I guess. Well, can you split it on the colon? Would that work? Would that yeah. give you subarrays? I mean, it would, it would give me, yeah, I mean, it would return an array that would be underpants in 699, right? And then I would be able to access, I would be able to, I guess I would be able to access. So yeah, I guess it would be uh, far, say, info, because that's general enough, and it would be products, products, that specific element, so products in the index of i, dot split and it would be colon and then item text equal zero should be let's put the info. So I'd return an array and I'd be able to access the zero index would be the item and the first index would be the price. I guess. I'm gonna go with that. Yeah. I'm not gonna <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the true answer is don't type out your code like that. <laughs> right, yeah, I mean, the, go ahead and create yeah. arrays <laughs> <laughs> or do objects. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, even better. You probably want to just set it up as an object beforehand and just loop through. That way, you can like concatenate and add it to as as a list variable. Yeah, because yeah. it's most likely going on the DOM, but we're messing with the back end or back, messing with the console, so. Cool, cool, cool. All right, fair enough. Uh, da, da, da. So I did that, right? Yeah. One containing splits current array item. If you're not sure, yeah. okay. So I did that. Okay. So as a part of the bind of love, you also want to convert. Oh, I guess I can. Well. Okay. So I guess I'm supposed to do that now. Far. Oh, no, that's not it. It's under here. So I guess I'm supposed to do, because I can't really do it until it's accessed. Ugh, this feels gross. <laughs> this feels so gross. I feel like such a chump doing this. Is there. <sighs> There's a way to like do it other than parse in, right? There's another way to. I thought there was. I'm trying to think of another way to. Convert. Can't you put number, like capitalized number? Right, the number object. Yeah, and then put the info one in parentheses. Would that work? Uh, let's see. Let's see if it returns it as. I'm hoping so. Uh, you know what? I can do this. Yeah. Okay. It's good. Cool. So yeah. So it returns it as a number. That's easier. Cool. 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 This is still weird. Uh, all right. So I did that. I did that. And then there's a variable called total that is created and given the value of zero at the top of the code. Inside the loop, we want you to add the line as the current price to the total to each iteration for the loop so that it ends with the code, the correct price. So I guess I'd use a compound. So this one would be the compound. Nope, that's not it. I'm going one under. Total, I'm looking for total. Total. Oh, I'm, I just create one. That's what I do. I just read because it's already it's up here so I just do total plus equals price. I hope that adds up. We'll see. I don't know math. 
Uh, okay. And then we want you to change the line below. So the final thing. So the current name, price. Cool. So info for zero. Plus string. Also, I realize I've kind of switched over to ES6 with the uh, the temperate literals, which is actually pretty. I like it a lot better. Yeah, it is. I, I like it's so much easier when you're instead of putting all those plus signs in there. <laughs> I just it, this just seems more set. Like, huh, look at that. I'm just doing info one. I don't have to do anything. Dash. This just feels right. And I'm not that concerned. Like it, it's not like it's anyone can't understand what's going on here. Did I miss my number? Okay. Bang. But it's neither here nor there. It shouldn't be that big deal. Uh, I think I need to add that. Did I not do the fancy long one? Who cares? Okay. Cool. I think I did it. Check out the name, item, uh, price, and then a total. So, um, what do you have down there at the bottom? Info one plus. Because I ended up splitting the products, like the specific, so the specific product element here. I split it into, into I guess an array. Like so, yeah. I guess it's a subarray. Or another array. So what's what's the info one? Uh, that should be this right here, six ninety nine. Hmm. Or I could do so. I could do um, here. So we can do it this right way. Index right. Products, products, I, index of, okay. Nope. Oh, that's why. Camel case, come on. Let's go. And then I can do so. Info would be products I dot slice I'm going from zero. I guess what I need to add. No, because it's going to the specific point, right? Oh, did I? Oh, because it doesn't have a price, because it doesn't know what the number is. Okay, so it does do that. Cool. Okay. And then the price would be the same, except it'd just be one parameter. Plus one. Right? I have to put that into a number. <laughs> of course, because I got to turn it into a number because I'm using it now. It doesn't know. So I technically could do that too. And so then it would be info plus um did I go wrong? I feel like I complicated this way too much. 
Yeah, let me let me uh, share my screen because like I'm getting kind of confused right here. Maybe you can help me out. Yeah. All right. Can you see my code? Yeah. I see it. On the hand side. Um. So I have info as product size split, and it seems to be working up here, but I'm missing something somewhere in my syntax. I think. As you notice, it produces underpants, but then I get not a number. But then down here, it's like put my price. Oh, do I have item text yeah. wrong? Uh, no, I I see. Um, so so for the price, um, that number info mm -hmm. i, it's it's just going to take the index of whatever is at right. So with that split, there's only going to be two indexes. Oh. So zero and one, because it's it basically it you're you're I guess it sh you should be thinking about this one as a subarray, right? So it doesn't right. it doesn't have anything to do about like it's splitting the specific index into another array. So there's oh. only going to be two indexes of that uh, of that info. So. Would I have to add another bracket in here? That wouldn't make sense. No, well, I mean, if if you're going to assume every, um, the assumption that I made when I did that, right, was going to be every second index was going to contain the price. Mm -hmm. Because every, every, every first and every zeroth index of products is going to be the description. Every first index was going to show the, the, the price. So, hold on, me, uh, yeah, what is all this crap? Um, so, like, wouldn't it turn out to look something like, yeah, I guess you can, like, you know, it'd be underpants, or actually it would be, you said it's a sub-index or a sub-array, right? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's technically a sub-array, like, if you were to access it, but I mean, it's, it's like, uh, wouldn't it look something like that? And then, but that, but the cool thing is at least with that, with the, with the, um, with the variable name, you're accessing it directly. So that variable, like, so it is technically a sub, it's, it's a sub index, but you're, you're accessing it in the moment like with that variable as as if it was literally like that variable so you don't have to worry about it being like uh, you don't have to worry about like it being like the sub array like you're just you're dealing with it as if it's just an array in that moment for for each loop yeah i don't think i'm catching on oh. <laughs> so uh, so yeah so, so how about you oh, go ahead no, what I was saying is like on this loop, the price would equal like on the first loop. What would price be? Price would be if you were doing the loop right now. Price would be um, underpants, right? Or no, yeah, it would be underpants because it's zero. It's taking it's taking i. So if yeah. i is zero in the first index, it would be underpants. And in the first, the, they would go the next loop. It would be one. So it'd be oh, six, okay, it'd be that makes five ninety nine. And then, and then everything else will be undefined, right? Because it doesn't know uh, everything. Like it's it's just gonna have two indexes, so it doesn't know what's going on. Yeah, just like me. <laughs> <laughs> so this, I think this is my line that's totally messing me up. Probably. Also, the extra dollar sign in the uh, temperate literal too. Probably under next to price. Well, that's because I wanted the dollar sign to show yeah. up. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Duh. Like, ooh. Um, Naturally. I'm, but I'm still getting out a number. What does that do? Nothing? I don't know how to do this line. I wonder how they did it. 
can always check the show solution page on the or button down next to reset. So they did the split and then name is subarray zero. Oh, uh, okay. I see what they did now. Okay. So they separated it. Okay. Number yeah. subarray one. Yeah, so it was about. So that's where I messed up. I didn't have the name. You were taking the info mm -hmm. and just splitting it. And then, yeah. So it should be, there should be a variable that actually houses that subarray mm -hmm. and then the name and the price. That makes that's sense. Okay. Yeah, I that's get it looking at the solution. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it definitely makes sense now. Hmm. I know it's weird. Cause like, yeah, like when I deal with arrays, you normally, you normally like there's a rare case in algorithms that you know that a specific index is going to do something right. Right. Like you're always, you're basically just covering yourself if like a bunch of data comes in. Mm -hmm. So there's never really ever. Yeah. It's always going to be at that index regardless of where you are in the loop. I see what you're saying. That feels weird. That feels <laughs> Well, it feels weird that you don't type arrays like this. <laughs> <laughs> Because there's normally an index, like, yeah, you're normally tying it to the loop, like you're tying it to whatever's going on in there. Yeah, that's, yeah, this is definitely a, uh, let's just make your brain work. You're not, this is not practical in any way, but <laughs> we're just going to make you think about this and make you slice strings that are in an array into subarrays and loop through you know, them. Because, because <laughs> why not? Cool. That makes sense. I'll let you, sh you share again. Cool. All right. Should I should go to the desktop? There we go. Cool. All right. Did I do it that way? Oh, I guess I did colon. In. Oh, that's why. Because, yeah, I, I did the same thing. I, or did I? Let's see. Yeah, because you don't have a separate. Uh... Did I take? Oh yeah, I guess I didn't take it as a variable. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. what I did. I literally just split it instead of, I probably should have just called this something else and then the name. Okay, yeah, cool. But it, but it still works out, I don't understand what you did. Cool. Oh boy, this should be fun. All right, active learning, top five searches. A good use for array methods like push or pop is when you are maintaining a record of currently active items in a web app. In an animated scene, for example, you may have an array of objects representing background graphics displayed, currently displayed. You might only want 50 displayed at once, which doesn't make sense for performance or clutter reasons. As new objects are created and added to the array, older ones are deleted from the array and maintained in the desired number. In this example, we're going to show a much simpler use here. Here, we're given a fake search site with a search box. The idea is that when terms are entered in the search box, top top five previously used search terms are displayed in the list. Uh, when the number of terms goes over five, the last term starts being deleted each time a new term is added to the top. So previous five terms are always displayed. In a real search ad, you probably want to be able to click the previous search terms to return to previous searches. It would display actual results. We're just keeping it simple for now. Thank you. To complete the app, we need underline below 91 comment that adds the current value entered into the search input to start uh, or to the start of the array. Uh, this can be retrieved. Uh, this can be retrieved using search input dot value. Cool. And below line two, the comment that is removed. Uh, that removes the value currently at the end of the array. Okay, so there's line one. If line, okay, so if search value is not empty, this goes to the front. So that would be unshipped. Yes. And then we're going to use, so my history is the empty array. And we'll use unshift. And they said 
the value is search input dot We'll only allow term monitor and search term. I did it though. All right, whatever. Ooh. All right, straight up the ship. Okay, and below line. So it would be my history dot pop. So that would take the last item. Yeah, that one seemed like super simple compared to the less. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Is that it? Yeah, so when you add like five things to it, it'll take the last one off. So if you add like five different things. The empty list so that we can just display duplicates. It's got an on click function. Why isn't that working? Did I break it? Uh, check your last line of code you just put in. Make sure you. My history dot pop, because I just entered those two lines almost exactly, and it's working. Uh, maybe it's the variable name that I I might have. Yep. There you go. Bang. Test two. Test test. Test three. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Wow, that was easy. <laughs> I feel like there needs to be more work. I uh, they simplified it. So Yeah, I'm just wondering what MDN's gonna throw at us when we move on to the loops and conditionals and all that shit. <laughs> Fun. All right. <laughs> After reading this article, we are sure that you'll agree arrays seem pretty darn useful. Those seem to crop up they'll seem to crop up everywhere in JavaScript, often in association with loops. In order to do the same thing to every item in the array, we'll be teaching you all the useful basics that are you know about loops in the next module. But for now, you should give yourself a clap and take a well-deserved break. You've worked through all the articles in this module. The only thing left to do is work through this module's assessment, which will test your understanding of the articles that came before. Dope. Yeah, so for this silly story generator, we'll just uh, build this on our own. And then... Uh... Cool. You know, if we need any help, we can throw it on. Yeah. Yeah. You could probably just, you know, push it to GitHub or whatever, and then take a look at it tomorrow. Cool. Awesome. So yeah. Thanks so tomorrow we'll probably be doing um, the building block section of this, um, which covers conditionals, looping code, functions, return values, events. And then there's an image gallery module at the end or project. Oh, I see. Okay, within here. Yep. Okay, this is about where we were at with. Well, I guess this is towards. This is towards the end of a, uh, like the last half of basic JavaScript. Yeah. We kind of went to like conditionals with like lightly through loops. We kind of went through functions. Actually, no. I guess we did. Like we did a return and all that. And then, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm I'm thinking like once we get through the building blocks section and the object section, mm -hmm. uh, we could probably just jump right over to free code camp and do the ES6 since. I think yeah, that's that was my 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 fear yesterday. I didn't want to move on to ES6 because I felt like a lot of people um, were probably not still comfortable with JavaScript, and so yeah, I I kind of wanted to get them more comfortable with objects and functions and loops before. Yeah, you definitely got to understand 
like I think my biggest hang up when I first saw ES6 and I was confused about it was returning stuff. Right. Right. Because then like yeah, because like the last few months I went into like a functional like fa- like just seeing why functional programming was so useful, mm-hmm. or more to see like the, the general purpose more than like running a bunch of for loops to use all those methods and and use like basically use like functions within functions and higher order like I see now why to an extent that is helpful but it seems like it's more in like react and uh, maybe like frameworks that it's yeah that it's be preferred and that's and I'm really looking forward to that like getting through this JavaScript stuff and then like group learning like react um, yeah I think that would be super helpful yeah because like I've, I've done like a broad like high level because I, I, two, I think I've, I've done this for like, I've been studying like on and off for like two years and like I learned mm. three months of jQuery and I was like, well, I guess I know I can learn React now. And I was like, so overwhelmed. It was not, that was not the way to go. And yeah. So, <laughs> React is not been, jQuery. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I've been like slowly dipping my toes in React and like understanding general high level JavaScript concepts. So like now I think I feel like if I like jumped heavy into React, it would be I, I wouldn't be so confused. It would right. be, like there's still a lot, like I feel like it's still overwhelming, but uh, yeah. it wouldn't be so bad. Cool. So um, yeah, well, I guess we'll just, uh, we'll, we'll end the meeting there. Um, yeah. And then uh, yeah, work on that stuff in our off time and then come back tomorrow and jump back into MDM. I'm, I'm cool. like, I'm starting to like MDM more that I've gone through it. At first I didn't like it because I was yeah. like, oh man, this just seems like reading out of a book and i hate reading out of books to learn code it's how i felt about yeah like eloquent javascript and like i've tried to i tried to read kyle simpson's you don't know javascript like four times yeah this i i've i've gotten through most of scopes and closures and like some of that that it helps but it's also like him literally taking his not opinion but like he's just re-threading through like the actual like um um, what is it the es module like the actual written spec for javascript mm-hmm. he just read it and like interpreted it into more like but it's still computer sciencey and right. so like all of it was like just way too much and uh but it, it helps like every few months i'll read it and like maybe pick one or two things up that confuse me and now makes more sense mm-hmm. it's just it's it's still a lot like yeah so. yeah i'm in the same but i started learning coding like last year around I would say around April. Okay. And yeah, I jumped into learning like HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then like the further I got into JavaScript, I was like, I have no clue what's going on as I got further and further into it. You know, I knew the basic stuff like variables and loops and functions. But then like when I got into later stuff, higher order functions and all that right. stuff did not make sense to me. And then yeah, when I, I kind of I, yeah. I okay. slacked off on it. And then when the learning group started, I jumped back in and I like all of a sudden it like made more sense. Right. Yeah. I think I, I think I fall apart at like project structure. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I, I think I've gotten a lot better with like DOM manipulation and that's probably going through like building little projects. But mm-hmm. I think the most frustrating thing is read all those, like all those books are very like food bar makes no sense. <laughs> Running a function called food and then like trying to explain it that way is like the yeah for me too i i wish there was i wish there was human like i'm still trying to find a book that like makes it human readable right because like foo bar like examples are dumb Mm -hmm. and and they don't they don't help and like i guess if you did like a few semesters of computer science that would make sense because you've been inundated with those examples but right they still suck yeah they don't especially to somebody new that's just learning it yeah, every complicated like lecture, I always like try to ask what a real world example would be, and like I'm fifty fifty on the answer. Like fifty, like sometimes it'll make sense, and then sometimes they'll do some weird dumb, like create a new function that goes in there and gets all weird, and mm-hmm. it it doesn't it doesn't apply to what you would do in your job, which I think yeah. is the most part. And that's how I felt whenever I read anything like that had a function within a function. Right. They called another function and I'm like, all right, this is just ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure if I built I, something like that from scratch, I would understand <laughs> it, but not looking at 
the way you did it. <laughs> right. I think the one, like the one thing that like made more sense is um, I took this. Uh, there's this boot camp out here called CodeSmith, mm-hmm. and so when they explain JavaScript, they go through the actual engine. So like how JavaScript actually reads the code, and like they like so there's this thing called the execution context, which is really just a box where all the variables and the things that you do within a function get thrown into. Like that's all it is. Mm-hmm. And so like seeing that and then going through a few examples finally helped me understand why you would write a certain like why you would write uh, you know, or where everything goes. And uh, so that's slowly like that that made me feel less stupid. <laughs> Right. I still feel very stupid with a lot of these concepts, but that was like the first step where it all kind of like at least mm-hmm. clicks somewhat. But it also like requires you to understand that like the JavaScript yeah. engine is super weird. That's dumb things. And yeah, it's it's, it's trying it's, its best. Yeah, but it's a it's a good feeling when you're learning coding and it finally does click and you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> right. Why did why didn't I understand that a month ago? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cool. Awesome. Well, I'm going to take off, Adam. Um, I'll catch you tomorrow night uh, for your yeah. meeting. So, yep. I'll, I'll I'm catch sure you. I will be. I'll stop right, this recording and get it uploaded.